Welcome, all of you who might be watching at home. This is a D&D 5th Ed homebrew campaign called Legend of the Drowned Dials, uh, in which uh, my players uh, wander through my world of Amesha uh, and uh, generally are the movers and shakers. How about that? Uh, we are normally four players and me, but unfortunately one of my players uh, was not having much luck with internet connection. And during this time of social distancing and uh, everything happening online, we kind of had to pivot. So we're going to move to something a little bit different. But first, let me, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. I'm the GM host and uh, uh, general uh, busybody involved with this particular game and campaign. I have my players. Guys, why don't you introduce yourselves, starting with, uh, with Pat on my left. Uh, my name is Pat. Uh, what more do you want to know uh, right now? Because we're doing character stuff later. It's true. We, there's not a lot to really. Uh, really I am possibly playing yet, someone but... named Silas, as you can tell uh, from the screen. Yeah, all, little little spoiler there, uh, but yes, uh, uh, it's not much of an introduction, I suppose. I wanted you guys to have a chance to to. Uh, to if you uh, see me hello. reaching off to the left here, it's because there's a cat on the chair next to me. I think that's a yeah. common threat through the most of this. Also, yeah. cat to my left as well. In the middle, yeah, we have, behind the laptop here. In the middle, we have Marie. Uh, I guess I'll introduce you guys, but I, I kind of want you to get your voice print out there. How's it going, Marie? Going good. I have big plans for my character. No, so. oh, I should worry. And on the other side, we have Nax. Hey, Nax. Hey, how are you? So, fun idea. What if we all introduced our cats someday? <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe I'll run a, a campaign or a session of, of everybody plays their cats, and uh, it'll make it a lot easier for all of us to understand what's going on. That would be such a train wreck, but awesome. In the mail. I actually have uh, in, in the other room, I backed the Kickstarter for the Calls of Cthulhu, and sometime I'm going to run that game. But, uh, but that's not the game happening today. Now, normally we are playing uh, The Legends of the Drowned Dials in the year 41 something or other, 4100 and something or other. I haven't got that note in front of me here. But because uh, our good friend Jody can't join us for this, we've decided that we're going to put that game on pause. Um, my principal friend in that game has always been that I like to have all the players there because all of those stories are integrated into the into the campaign, and I also uh, like for everybody to have that opportunity to, to experience it in real time. So we've slimmed down a little bit to the three players who have uh, slightly better internet connections at home, uh, and uh, we're going to run a different campaign. But this campaign, while set in the world of Omesha, is not set in the current day. I wanted something that was a little bit separated from that uh, original story. Uh, we will return to it. They're right on the cusp of uh, stopping an invasion of, uh, of uh, terrible things, uh, searching for the heart of uh, Baturo in that case, a demon lord. There's a whole lot of mythology. I won't, I won't get into it too much right now. But a thousand years before that story takes place is where we're going to find ourselves. It is a strange time in Omatia's history. I referred to in a footnote of history as the time of the Great Confusion. Uh, there is a strangeness which has come over the world, and everybody has felt one form of the strangeness or another. In the generation that experiences it directly, it is a period of uncertainty. It is a period in which you're not even entirely sure what happened last year. It seems as though everything normal happened, and yet there are gaps and fog around the memories. Uh, as the generations will go on, this fog will fade to nothing more than a footnote, as I mentioned, to almost being completely forgotten about by the time the game that we other the game we're playing rolls around, the year 4000 and something. So, uh, that's where our game is going to take place. This generation is experiencing the great confusion. And uh, for those who have uh, experienced the other game, the great confusion was caused by one of the gods being eliminated. Uh, and, and there were a whole bunch of other replications that, that came about from that. One of the hopes that I have through this weird uh, campaign, this secondary campaign, is to actually give my players a little bit of insight into how all that came about. 
so you guys get a chance to fill in some of the story gaps that I've left in the other story. But we'll see. I've, I've, I've got that sort of grand, uh, that grand hope. But honestly, this is going to be probably a bit more episodic. It's my hope anyway. I say that. I'm not very good at episodic, but we'll see. Uh, where there's going to be smaller quests to fulfill and uh, I, your own stories to pursue. That's the other thing I want to mention is that each of these characters will have their own stories involved here. Uh, and they are not uh, subservient to the main story we have developing in the other, other place. Now, all that being said, I've given a few parameters uh, for the place where we're going to be setting things. But part of today's session is in developing that place. The other part is in developing these new characters. And uh, mostly that. We're not going to get into, I don't think, any of the role play today. Uh, after the session, I have a whole lot of work to figure out a few more details that I need, uh, and then, of course, start the plot moving forward. So, uh, as I said, taking place about a thousand years ago, uh, in a place, w uh, in a couple of the islands, one of which you've actually dealt with a little bit before, that is the island of Icro. Uh, that was where um, the original group had fought a young green dragon in a tower and met up with Ed and Anya. Uh, Ed being the Ed being the emu and Anya being the emu farmer, uh, who introduced you also to Black Moss Tea. Uh, the only other connection you have is to the land of Alaria. Now, nothing more than a collection of towns in the in the present day of the other campaign, but a thousand years ago was a uh, thriving uh, fiefdom uh, where a king and queen ruled over the area. Uh, and you have one little connection to that, um, which uh, Marie might remember as one of the artifacts that she picked up. Oh, that was from the time. other trial. That was from the Kingdom oh, okay, of so Alaria. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you actually picked it up on the island of Icro. Um, I think. Well, you, anyway, uh, there is a connection there. We'll, we'll, we may or may not explore that connection. We'll see. So... A few other uh, little things. Um, we are going to be starting in a port town on the island of Alaria. The town has a couple of thousand people, uh, primarily human, although there's a, a mix of uh, most of the other races. Not far away are some mountains. In fact, there is a, a smallish dwarven city in one of those mountains, uh, as well as uh, uh, it is a port, so there are lots of people coming from all over. Uh, it's a busy port, but a small seaside town. Uh, as uh, At least that's as I've conceived of it so far. One of the things that would be happening as well in reaction sort of to the uh, Great Confusion uh, is a lot of uh, soldiers are coming back through ports. They were off fighting a war that they no longer remember. Um, all they remember is feeling victorious and they are mourning their dead. But aside from that, there's not much they really recall. So you will see ships of soldiers occasionally coming back to this land uh, as well as traveling through. So um, a few questions for you guys. First of all, have you guys got any comments you want to make uh, right, right away about the place? Um, sorry, I was writing something down. Did we decide if it was like a really small village or just like a... a larger village like population wise is it a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand a couple of thousands i think i a couple of thousand was okay. suggested i like that suggestion a lot um because it gives yeah. a lot of opening for knowing quite yeah. a few people but not knowing everybody uh as well as a number of okay. different uh, groups and populations so yeah we're going for a couple of thousand people um exact population yeah who knows? Uh, and it actually uh, has links to like deep water stuff or is it just the uh the shallow water no all of the uh the waters okay. around the islands are deep so they're effectively they're like one large connected sea okay uh, have, do we have any of that part where there's like only like 10 or five feet of water and the rest is sand around here or is that something further off like in the other and in the previous game, the islands were mostly surrounded by that. Uh, is that present around here, or would that be not something we had seen? Well, um, what are people interested in? Which way would want people want to go? What difference does it make, actually, too, uh, as well? 
Uh, I, I would say that part of the beach should be fairly shallow, so you can actually pull small boats and uh, some vessels right up to the shore. But there would be a spot where, where larger ships can actually dock, but that might be an extended uh, extended dock. Yeah, I'm just thinking like for the, the kinds of, kind of my fishing thing. done. Um, so Okay, no, that's, I, that sounds fine. I, I don't have a problem with it either way. Any thoughts about that? Am I on mute or no? Okay. I, well, I nope. realistically, it should have like both types of ships being able to dock, right? Maybe not in the same location, but like okay, possibly elsewhere in the island. I don't know. Um, what would be the biggest kind of ship? Uh, kind of ships that we've seen. Um, hmm. like I'm assuming, like uh, one of the thoughts that is that Silas's parents are fisher people. Uh, so they head off in boats over the horizon, fish in like dangerous areas, come back, uh, sell the fish to the town. Um, is like a large fishing boat the biggest we've seen, or is ha, I would there be galleons occasionally uh, sailing along? Uh, I mean, probably not docking with us, but uh, I mean, considering that soldiers are coming back from war on the ships. I'd say there are probably warships. You froze up a little bit. Con considering that um, I said that there were many soldiers returning um, from sea, mm. then I would I would say that there was probably warships. Yeah, I mean, yeah. every single size, like from tiny to biggest ships, biggest ships in Omasia, just because like if it's the main port in the island, it would make sense. Yeah. Well, um, I hadn't okay. thought of it as the main. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, like we're a small town, kind of. Yeah, I, I think that there will be other larger harbors where the, which would be more main ports. But this is this would be one of those ports which is used because it's convenient. Uh, it's a good stopping place along the way. You can drop off uh, things that'll go further inland via road, as well as you can also yeah. pick up resources. Uh, I mean, partly I'm asking is. Uh, like what kind of uh, what kind of large vessels are there in Amasia at this time? I mean, like, does something like a galleon exist, uh, or is it more like smaller ships uh, or um, or driven ships, smaller sailing vessels, that sort of thing? Uh, I, I just want to make sure, just if, if we uh... if we're thinking about port stuff, that we know kind of what scale mm -hmm. actually exists. And the the other challenge for yeah. me here is this is a thousand years before what I had thought of before. Because in in the present day campaign, um, you had actually seen a very large ship docked yeah. at uh, yeah. Taraka, uh, which was a very large uh, uh, sailing vessel, multiple decks. Um, I think in this time period, um, they are, aren't quite that big a ship. There are long distance sailing ships. Yeah. Um, because they're still the islands are still fairly far away for uh, for small ships. Um, most of what you would see here would be okay. rowing vessels. So not a lot of sailing um, ships, or I would say, yeah, okay, not a yeah. lot of large yep. sailing ships. Cool. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Uh, I remember in your write up, uh, you mentioned that there are several shrines or temples uh, of different kinds. There's the Mazni, uh, the dwarven one that starts with the T that I'm blanking on right now, Tendu, yep. and another one. Yeah, there'd be a, there'd be a, 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 a shrine to Maria, which would be close by so. the docks. So, yeah, the... the uh, the main one represented in, in, in weird way would be Marina. Uh, the name Marina was chosen specifically as a sea god, and that the word Marina comes mm -hmm. from her name. Um, the 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 dwarven uh, one is Tandu. Others can worship a, a ta at a Tandu arch. You actually encountered one in the other game uh, in the other world where the hag had her own uh, looked like a corrupted temple of Tandu. Uh, their 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 symbol is the yeah. arch. Uh, and the dwarves nearby uh, do come into town. They are known as, as very stalwart builders. Uh, they often also bring their own stone when they come to build buildings uh, in town. Uh, 
uh, and when they do, one of the one of the signs of a dwarven-made building typically is that it has a stone arch you know, over the main door. Um, but otherwise, there's no particular temple of Tandu here. At least I hadn't uh, I mean, suggested one. The no, other sorry, one. Go on. Okay. Uh, is, is no. there something you want to add, no. or, or just um, okay? Uh, with the Temple of Namazni, so you've seen a couple of temples of Namazni in the far future. Um, they are very uh, stylized. They are a white marble that has almost no features on the outside. They are small buildings. Uh, the one in this town would be even smaller, but it does hold a remarkable number of acolytes. Um, acolytes of Namazni in this time period are, uh, uh, are clerks, essentially. Uh, Namazni is known as the, the as the teaching uh, the teaching people. So most schools in this era are also run by Namazanians, although that's not necessarily true. Um, and there is a small white building, um, probably about nothing more than like twenty foot on a side, uh, which seems to hold the entire uh, Namazni teaching uh, area. Uh, and uh, so that's there as well. <laughs> Um, as I, I mentioned, there is a singular uh, representative of Ignis here, uh, Ignis the Ever-Burning, uh, a, 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 uh, a uh, kind of, um, I want to imagine it sort of like a flat um, stepped pyramid type temple uh, with a single burning flame in the open center of the temple. Uh, there is only one representative here, a flame keeper, whose name I haven't uh, figured out just yet. Um, but kind of, uh, the, the, the principle being that, 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 uh, the Ignean followers are pretty much everywhere. Uh, and there are people who come off of the ships to go specifically to, uh, bathe in the Everflame, but, uh, it is not a major representation here. And finally, uh, one of the other gods that you've been dealt with a little more intimately in the future setting, uh, Marius, uh, has no temples, has no followers. That's the okay. official story. Uh, I'll get it out of my system now. Uh, I will be keeping an eye on uh, the Tandu people because if they're bad guys, they're going to be arch villains. <laughs> Trust me, it's best if I get this out early. Oh, oh I am. I am absolutely. Uh, I, I will sing your praises. Um, I enjoyed that. Uh, I will now, have to write that down. There's so temples. Far. There are there. I mean, barring the possibilities of the player characters. Are there clerics there? Are there people of power or just um, like unpowered acolytes? Maybe. <laughs> well, that's what I say. Other than possibly player characters, I mean, other than <laughs> us, is there like a cleric in the town or something like that? Uh, there are people with power in each of those three temples, um, uh, definitely. The Flame Keeper is of obvious power and the only representative, the only official representative. Um, for the uh, Temple of Marina, it's probably someone who is a, uh, more of a, uh, a, um, a leader of rituals, uh, more than someone who has ascended highly within the, uh, the church. So while they might be a cleric, they're not very high of stature. Um, the Temple of Damasini, as always, uh, is a bit more opaque. Um, there are a lot of acolytes with a low power, and, but there is known to be, um, I forget the term for their high priestess, I think it is. Uh, there is a high priestess that is frequently seen there, but not seen often. That's the okay. intention right now. Uh, I just want to share, like, if, if are we the only people who may have magical powers in the town, or are there others? Um there will be others who have magical power. Um, magic items are relatively yeah, small. uncommon. Small amounts of magic are, are, do happen quite a bit. Um, but there aren't a lot that have a significant amount. Okay. Of power. Um, is, are there any like magical schools or anything in the town or any wizards other than player characters? Uh, it was, there wasn't anything mentioned in the write up. I just figured I'd check. Well, that's that's kind of one of the things that uh, that I'm looking for is what people are, are interested in. Um, again, with it being a smaller area, I wasn't thinking of yeah. the school as such, but there may be magic teachers. Um, is there any thought on that from uh, Marie or? Nets? I mean, I think there should be a 
a small presence. Like, maybe, I don't know, you said there was a royal family or something. So, maybe like a court wizard or something yeah. like that. Yeah, the idea is there's a lord nearby, although I've restated that in my notes as a baron nearby, uh, a baron and a baroness, uh, moving slightly up higher in the, uh, as I start to get a little bit more familiar with medieval ranking. Uh, yeah, the baroness is there, is Destro there too? I swear I'm getting this out now. <laughs> that 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 one that yeah. one is a little less impressive. <laughs> the arch the arch villain though I will remember. Uh, maybe the court wizard is also a follower of Tendu, and then can be yeah, a, an nice. arch wizard. Uh, uh, um, I would imagine that there will be a small number of people with sort of heavy yeah. magic as well. So there are traditionalists who would have that sort of uh, teaching and skill. Like I said, the Namazanians would be the primary teachers, but not everybody needs to learn math and philosophy and the things that they would be tending to teach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there, a, I mean, not that I would necessarily know a lot about it, but it, I, is there sort of a public knowledge of a black market type setup? I mean, we probably don't have like a a crime guild or an assassin's guild with like 2,000 people, but uh, is there anything where, uh, yeah, like it just so many people have heard like it. I mean, the town where I grew up was a couple of thousand people and You'd hear occasionally of like, oh, yeah, remember so-and-so threw a bag of pot from the window because the cops were chasing him down and, and whatnot. But there wasn't exactly like a, a black market, just there were people who maybe were a little under the, the law. Clearly yes. criminal masterminds <laughs> there were. in that case. What I'll suggest here, um, it is a port town, so there are a number of uh, goods that get travel travel off of ships here and go onto roads going in, as well as tra uh, goods that go off of the roads onto the ships. So there's definitely an opportunity for commerce, and that commerce can also lead mm, to the black market. Maybe smoke. Um, how... <laughs> yeah, oh, there's there's probably, I mean, with a couple of, th uh, a couple of thousand people, you know, there's probably a few thieves uh, maybe not. I mean, they may they might band together, wear badges, and call themselves a guild. But I yeah. suspect it's not uh, going to be uh, you know a full on. Here's uh, your guild rank. I guess I mean, how um, like how strong is the law in the area? Uh, like, is it something like oh, uh, alcohol is forbidden, uh, but maybe there's uh, uh, moonshiners out in the woods? Um, <laughs> like, is there anything that is uh, I mean, sort of unusually not available due to legal reasons. Um, oh, that's a good question. Any any thoughts on that from the other two? I can't think. Could of it anywhere. be just like any other random town? Like, there's going to be a small proportion of people who are doing illegal stuff, but if, in general, like most people are like good. It can be, yeah. Um, I mean, we can also make this the terrible seaport side where everybody is is about to stab everybody else for their I mean, their bottom. I'm assuming uh, it's a fairly coin. reasonably nice place with yeah. mostly decent people, uh, but some places will have like odd laws, like oh, this is a uh, this is a dry county, uh, so it's like oh, you actually can't get liquor here. Uh, so there are some people who just on the sly will sell it, or maybe they'll make some out in the middle of the woods. Um, I think there will always be an opportunity for moon yeah. <laughs> uh, because, uh, uh, but, but, uh, uh, one of the things that being a port city, this is also one of the places where a little bit of relief from being on sea for a long period of time could be had. Um, I don't know if that's a dominant feature. Any, any thoughts? Yeah. If on it's that a port town and if, if sailors are there getting off their ships for a little bit, I'm pretty sure they're going to be getting drunk and there's going to be other things going on <laughs> so 
maybe not a, a ban on alcohol, but there, there could be a, a lot of, uh, of uh, policing going on to make sure yeah. that those fights don't go. And considering overboard. that it's a port town, maybe there's also like a decent amount of like security not wanting to, to try to prevent illegal goods from coming in or stuff like that. Especially if it's a convenient port town. <laughs> yeah. If yeah, like so. Meant to be like a quick stop. The idea would for this one for me is that it's it's the it would be the first port you could get to Alaria from the west, uh, and that makes it a very easy drop to after a very long journey to drop off things, um, and probably well let's let's put it this way, being a small town and being a port which is connected by roads to cities inward, maybe this would be a great yeah. place to do smuggling. <laughs> Because there'd be a lot less people to watch you, and uh, you know, as opposed to a major city where they can afford a hundred guards, they probably don't. Yeah, so smuggling yeah. probably is a problem. <laughs> so, um, do the people accept that, or are they trying to fight that? It depends. Because uh, if what's your thoughts? If it's a small town and there's not that much money to go around for security, then the common citizens are probably in the mindset of like, well, if. Uh, even if I notice it, if I just go about my business, uh, they're not going to bother me. Like that could be like a frequent sentiment that people might have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of avoidance. Okay. All right. Um, you've had a pretty good set of questions so far, Pat. Anything else you'd like to bring up? Um, no, I just kind of coming up with them at the top of my head. Um. Like is uh, is this a fishing town? Uh, like it, I mean, like it, it's a port town. But does the town like are the fisheries a major part of the town? Uh, I mean, like you would get on the coast of Newfoundland or uh, that sort of thing. Um, like I know I'm th figuring my characters, parents, and and uh, family are people who operate a fishing boat, uh, but do we want the town to be a fishing town or is it actually only a few people do any fishing, uh, but it's, it's mostly about something else, like some other focus for the town. Any other thoughts on that? I reckon add mine. Well, fishing. I mean, fishing must be definitely happening. I don't know if it would be the main reason for the town though. Like the more I think about this, like as the discussion is progressing, uh, it almost feels like not like a it's like if you replace tourism with ships docking like most of the town's funding probably comes from the sailors getting drunk off their ass and spending the money in stupid matters so it there would probably be some some yeah. docking fees there would also be industries like uh, sailcloth making and uh, yeah. ship uh, shipwrights that sort of thing that would, would catering to the sailors the <laughs> yeah but yeah they, they, they um, must have i think that they must need something to eat when they come down. So fishing would be the obvious solution. So, yeah. I think that uh, uh, fishing would still be pretty big because fishing is something you can do in a relatively short distance away from the town. And then you have the town as support since they already have support for ships and they already have uh, a, a transmission for uh, goods out of the town. I think that that could be a very big thing. So likely what I would say and this is, again, I, I open this up for discussion, but what I would say is that uh, very likely um, being the docks are the major industry for this town, uh, whether that be the ships coming in or the, or the, or the fish. The fish would be the major sustaining uh, uh, food. There would be some farming outside of here, but I suspect that fish would be the largest food, and then they can ship that fish over land uh, further in towards the inland cities and towards the mountains. So uh, I'm going to, to suggest that um, there are many fishing vessels, um, but because it's important for your character, uh, Pat, I'm going to say that your family is the largest. Uh, sure. I mean, they don't have to be the largest, but yeah, they're kind of a clan of fisher people. Uh, the fishing yep. guild. Uh, sort of, yeah. They're, they're, they're a little outside of town, I think, but... Uh... We can get to that when we talk more about the characters. 
Oh, a uh, quick question. Well, it's kind of random and, and possibly like a very small part of the entire uh, world building. You know how in some parts of the world, like there's delicacies or some kind of yeah. seafood that costs way more than other than other kinds of seafoods. Is there any like creature, tasty creature that's unique to this island <laughs> that people would kill for? <laughs> well, not kill for, but like pay a lot of money for. Or possibly something dangerous or in a dangerous area. So, I mean, one of the reasons it would be costly could be that it's just harder to get. Um, yeah, that could definitely yeah. be the case. Uh, it could. Would it be something you fish for or something you yeah. hunt for? I would say if it's a port city, you're more likely to find something like gamey, more of a delicacy. Because everybody fishes. I mean, true, but it might be like sea lion or whale or, you know, a giant shark. Or some creature that you make up that looks like an illithid that lives in the water. I don't know. <laughs> sure. Sure. A, a, a mind <laughs> shark. A shark wearing <laughs> A shark flare? <laughs> a shark -tipus. There we go. Definitely. Um, I think that could definitely be the case. So there is a, a something unique about this town or, or a food that's generally yeah. only found in the town or yeah. something they ship out. Like the, uh, I mean, like the eels that the town... Yeah, uh, that's exactly what I was just about to think about. I just couldn't... Uh, from Waterstone. Yeah, I don't know what they're called, but yeah, was, there's some sort of eels that were it there. That, literally just the Waterstone eels. <laughs> yeah. Totally forgot about that. <laughs> yep. Yep, that was just a small little mm -hmm. quirk of that Cameron particular place. Yeah, for that. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I just couldn't remember what it was. I, I remember there was something about Waterstone. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, all the influence of all the many uh, cooking shows that I've watched over the last few years has definitely influenced when I get to a restaurant uh, scene or a... Uh, <laughs> A farming scene or something, and I would expect yes, that would still continue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, speaking about that, though, um, what is the level of wealth in the town? Is it generally uh, a few wealthy people? Is it generally the baron who has the, all all the wealth and power? Is this a a thriving town or a struggling town? How would you want to see this? I don't think it should what be super like wealthy. Place? Uh, just because, I mean, that at that point is kind of like, I mean, why do you go adventuring? The town's doing yeah. well. You can get a decent job. Um, and I, I mean, I always like having the disparity between the rich baron and the poor locals. Uh, and also, I mean, in places that aren't doing well, then, I mean, the the black market, the, the criminal groups tend to... Uh, be a little more prominent. Like if mm -hmm. we're doing smuggling through here, then, I mean, that would be one reason that people would allow it because they don't make a lot of money normally. Uh, so they get involved in it, whether they really want to or not to get by. Um, so with that, uh, with the Baron having that role, perhaps the Baron imposes a taxes and uh, through the their own uh, legion of soldiers uh, is the soldier, is the police for the town so that uh, it is the baron's forces that people deal with. Not uh, Yeah, I mean, I would, I would assume that, like, if there's a local, if the baron's very close at all, then probably it's all about uh, the baron or baroness's uh, troops that make the law because, I mean, in this kind of setting, the person with the money and the weapons makes the law. Um, and if they have the legal right to, then True enough. even better for them. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I, unless okay. people have other ideas, I, I don't want to dominate this. Yeah, that um, would make sense. And, uh, if they're too strict or if they're being too tyrannical, then it'll reflect with like increased violence. So they're like shooting themselves in the foot if they want to become tyrants. So I figure like some level of control, but. The, the town is generally like comfortably wealthy, not super rich, but comfortable. Like, there's still wealth inequality, obviously, but I mean, nobody's living like absolutely in an absolutely destitute manner. 
So the, the you know the primary street is yeah. not necessarily mud. Might be might be dirt and and packed stone. Like but it's middle not mud. class, lower middle class type thing. Okay. Um, I have a question. Um, so sure. the Baron, is there anyone on the island that's above them? Is it like a center kingdom with branches? So the, the kingdom of Alaria does take over more than one island, but it is centered on uh, this, on, on Alaria. Uh, there is a, a king, and then below the king there would be uh, a few dukes, and then you get down to kind of the... I might skip a couple of the medieval styles, because it goes like king, duke, margrave, mm. uh, viscount... <laughs> Baron, I'm probably yeah, gonna skip can, a Normally, there. there's one duke because the duke is the head of the fee army. Uh, they're the one that normally leads the army. Uh, it 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 kind of depends. Like England had six dukes at one point. Yeah. Um, and a lot of, but they the the margraves or the marquis were very very uh, uh, limited. Um, but yes, there there is a, a hierarchy. Um. Of, of sort of the, the local area would be uh, uh, run by a baron who oversees this town and probably a couple of other uh, smaller towns. Uh, there would be probably, I would jump to Margrave as the next level, which would be the province, essentially, uh, and then jump up to the king, which would be the entire collection of islands. So the, uh, so the local baron is kind of low on the in the uh, the ranks, so to speak. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does that yep, answer so your Baron, question? Margrave, Marie? and then King. And Margrave is the province, and King is the whole thing. That's right. And I mean, there might be specific cases where there is a, a duke in the middle, which is not of a region, but more or less of a, of a higher rank. Like uh, Pat was saying, there might be a duke who is in charge of the armies, or or there might be a, a central clerk who is in charge of the uh, make sure all the taxes come in. They kind of fit in there in a weird sort of way, but as far as regions go, I think that's where I'm gonna that's where I'm simplifying things. Again, if anybody has a suggestion, um, I w it was fun looking up the in different names of these yeah. things and seeing where they fit. Graph was one actually of the learning history. <laughs> yeah, go figure. Go, learning history and <laughs> making it all up anyway. Uh, so, I, I, low... Yeah, uh, Baron would be low in terms of royalty, but still quite yeah. high compared oh, yeah, to yeah. the local people. Um, um, I'm also thinking of the Baron being in direct control. There's okay. no mayor. Does that make sense for people? Or is there, or is there a reason people want um, a mayor? The only reason I can think of for having a mayor might be that the Baron doesn't want to directly control things and lets the mayor handle the, like, look, you make the town run, but everything's really under my control. But that's up to the, the character of the Baron. Maybe the Baron's uh, very much wanting to be in control of it, so everything goes through him or her. Uh the other thing I can see there is there would be prominent people within the town who kind of act as a collective mayor, but always report back to the Baron for... Yeah, I mean, there could be a council. council. Yeah. Uh, that was the model in Vitour is they had a council that used to answer to the king, but the king abdicated, leaving yeah. the council in charge. Um, so is the, is the Baron really close to the town? Like, are we the town outside the walls, or is the Baron like still like five or 10 or so miles away is so it's it's not we can't just go right to the castle anybody have a particular opinion on that hmm. maybe we could travel to the castle like my within a day's travel my thought was that the castle would be on a prominent outcropping of rock such that it can be seen from the town, but it still takes quite a while okay. to get there. Yeah, sure. that works. Yeah. So how uh, how big is the town? Like we've established, it's it's like a couple like of thousand, two thousand people. But I mean, like yeah. how in terms of population density, like how many kilometers wide and long is it? 
Um, I'm trying to think because the town I grew up in, Perth Andover, was basically on the river, on both sides of the river, and had two thousand or twenty five hundred people Excuse at the me. time I lived there. Uh, it would have been maybe like a a couple, like two kilometers across, maybe for the main part of the town, and then some people living outside it. Um, and it would have been kind of a middle class sort of place uh, or lower middle class. Um, so I mean, it, at a guess, it might be something around that. Uh, we you could make it smaller if you packed more people in, or you could spread it out a little further. Um, I'm kind of assuming that around the docks themselves is sort yeah. of a center of the town where you would have a lot of the commerce, some of the shops, that sort of thing. And then you would have far flung, uh, smaller communities, which are still part of this town. Uh, but they're sort of like little hubs. Um, some of them would be family based. Others would be based off of a particular industry. For example, the tanners might be outside of town because you don't want that in yeah. the water supply <laughs> sinks to high heaven. Uh, but you don't want it too far away because you want to be able to get those pelts and everything back and forth. So um, I think making it spread out like a couple of kilometers wide, but with a, a small, dense uh, downtown, essentially, of probably half a dozen streets, yeah. it probably makes sense to me. Cool. Okay. Here's a question. Does anybody have a name for this town? Anybody have an idea of what they would like to call this place? Portland. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, no, I would. I, I do not think we should. Portsmouth. Uh, waterside. Um, waterside. Uh, We're on the island of Owari, right? That's right. And I do have some named cities on Olaria, but I don't have anything smaller than that. And this would be definitely falling into that smaller. I'm trying to think of something. Let me just see if I've got the names of the cities here, and I can. Tell yeah, that, you. that that would give a feel uh, for the island, and then. Uh, let's see the let's see the south. Uh, let's see, that would be the is that the Esca stretch? Is that what I called it? Yes. Okay, but that's not the map I was looking for. <laughs> I've created so many maps. I have to uh, go for. The, oh yeah, southeastern. Is that the eastern kingdoms? No, that's that's the Middle Eastern, Lower Eastern kingdoms. That's what yeah. I call them. Here we go. So uh, on the screen, <laughs> I can certainly try. Let me switch to another screen, and then we'll try to. Uh, that's the wrong screen. So I just moment to change that to. Uh, where is that? Uh, I'm just looking for, there it is. Okay. So I'll have to resize this slightly. Real time remapping. There we go. So the islands of Eskis and Icro, not far away from the Perfume Reef, which is not really a permanent settlement, but it's it's a, a, a series of reefs that are close enough together that things grow. So uh, I'm thinking this is not far away from uh, Pitajun or Elikan. Those are both a little bit in uh, inland from from there. Um, I don't know if I have the particular central city. Um, or am I even thinking the wrong map? Because <laughs> yeah, I don't <laughs> see Alaria. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just realizing that myself. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, sorry. It will be. Uh, it will be. Eskis will be the island because the kingdom of Alaria. Let's see if this works. Let me bring it up here. Uh, is a different island, uh, and I will just bring that to. This one, which is the Eastern Kingdoms, so these are the kingdoms of Alaria. So there, this is, so this is the island of Alaria. The kingdom of Alaria does include the southern islands I was talking about before. Okay. So both sets. Um, so you're actually quite far away from where the kingdom is. My mistake. I was thinking of Eskis as Alaria. I think it should be something Cove. 
because the cove kind of gives us a, a feeling like we're the one town with this little cove area uh, we're maybe slightly isolated from other towns I mean not super isolated but um, okay uh, starting with like so we're socially isolated we should call it covid you know, there we go id cove <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm not so sure I can get behind that. <laughs> yeah, that, that was not a serious suggestion. <laughs> uh, it was something, that's for sure. Uh, so, um, I'll see if I can actually draw another one of these on here. Um, pardon me while I do things in real time uh, to bring up Wanted. All right. You copied the wrong window. So there you go. Copy, paste. All right. So I'm trying to put both both photos on the map at the same time. Um, anyway, yes. Uh, <laughs> Continue your discussion as I <laughs> play real time with uh, with all these things. Mm. So Cove is an interesting suggestion. I mean, I would technically completely veto Id Cove. <laughs> uh, maybe it has Nineteenth Street on it or something. Mm. I mean, it might be like Deep Cove or. Uh... Shoot, what was one in MASH? I think Hawkeye was from a something cove. Oh. Um, yeah. Yes, Crab, it was uh, a very Crab, main name. Crab Cove? Crab something cove? Anyways. Crab tree, maybe? Yeah, uh, something like that. Now. Yeah, um, that's roughly how those two fit together, by the way. Is... Okay. It gives just an idea of like what other places are around. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you guys haven't really explored a lot of these places, um, and I'm I'm trying to remember offhand if I remember much about them myself. I believe New Huddleston was primarily a gnomish island. Um, and Icro was uh, fairly um, treed; it was very full of lush, large trees and emus. Because <laughs> why not? Uh, and uh, the naming scheme that I'm going for here is a little bit odd. So it, you can always have a local name such as known as Fairweather Cove, but it might have a name which is its official translation, which the outside world would know. Yeah, I mean, it could be the village is named after the Baron or something. Yeah. Could be. Or something so, that implies rest and relaxation because people are disembarking from like several weeks of being on the boat yeah could be named after that strange uh unique fish yeah <laughs> or, cra or crab or whatever it is that uh you grow in this area that's it crab apple cove that was the mash one oh, yeah. <laughs> bothering me uh, yeah i mean i'm i'm up for whatever really um do we have to name it right now? We could like just bounce yeah. ideas around on Facebook. We can definitely bounce ideas around. I just figured if anybody had a particular name, uh, any idea about the Baron? I can always name things. naming is something I enjoy doing, um, but it, it's always I always like to have input. Marie, did you say something? Naming for me is something I'd put in a random name generator and find something I like. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, none of these names are randomly generated, um, and there are something like three hundred names now of town. Uh, but, uh, uh, I did have particular themes in mind. You'll find Alari, Alari itself, uh, has names like Paravel and, uh, uh Dunchester, Old mm -hmm. Castle. So, uh, very kind of British inspired. I remember Care Paravel <laughs> from the Narnia <laughs> series. It's true. I had forgotten about that. Um, and if you 
carve a large ship out of a fruit, it's a pear caravel. <laughs> Sorry. I remember for Eskis, um, because we had an emu and Icro, uh, mm -hmm. all of the names are actually birds. Mm -hmm. So you have Pitajun, you have Torque, you have Osprey, uh, Pertridge, a Hicken, uh, an Anguin, a Vlimu. <laughs> so there are weird, weird patterns to these things. Uh, it's nice to finally actually tell people about that. All right. Um, <laughs> so uh, we've talked a lot about the town here, and we're about halfway through the time we kind of allotted. I think we've got a basic idea. Is there anything else anyone wants to make sure is a feature of the town? Um, mm -hmm. Either something your characters are involved with or something you'd like to see as a, as a, as a feature of the town? Um, if you don't have anything right now, well, we can definitely move on to characters, but I want to make sure that's out there. And you can always uh, send me a message afterwards saying, hey, I'd like to I can't think of anything. Okay. How about uh, you next? I can't think of anything else either. Okay. Marie? Nothing comes to mind. Okay. These things will, will trickle out of our minds as we go forward, so there's no particular reason to have to have it right now. But I want to make sure that's an open, an open question, an open comment if anybody's interested in getting involved. I will say, because it is a port town, I will be looking into ship rules. I don't know if you'll actually be getting on board a ship, but that's possible both as an influence on your character, as a background thing, or it may be something that goes to, sh goes to ship at, goes to sea at some point. Um, there are definitely pirates who operate on the seas, so that may or may not become an element of your of your story. Um, and again, with the grand confusion, with the great confusion happening, there's a lot of uncertainty. And in that uncertainty is one of the things, one of the areas that I plan to to play in. Uh, I plan to explore how that uncertainty comes out in people, as well as potentially uncertainty as to what reality actually is. So that's where I'm planning to play. We'll put the maps away for the moment back to uh, to look faces but now we're going to turn to character creation now i kind of gave you some of these parameters earlier in the week and you guys have all been busily thinking about these some some have gone a little further in character creation than others which is which is fine uh the idea now is to make sure that they come together so everybody has a basic understanding of who the other characters are um and look for places where their characters are compatible also places where they're incompatible but I want to make sure that the incompatibilities are there for story reasons, not for not because you personally are offended or, or irritated by another character's aspect. Um, these are opportunities to role play more than they are opportunities to actually be annoyed, <laughs> which is not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to bring up my notepad that I I made. Certainly, I love how your screen is in in the sky, <laughs> <laughs> comparatively to the camera. So do I have um, time to quick to take like a two minute break real quick? Uh, uh, yeah, you certainly can. I will go very fast. Okay. Yeah. Um, we will uh, we will entertain ourselves in the meantime as the next goes for the break. Um, um, there we go. So I will be trying to dig up a series of images as well to try to evoke the town. I chose one as a backdrop this particular time just to try to show a dock, but I think it's a much more advanced dock than probably what we're looking at. This is a dock actually much closer to a place in France that I visited um, where it has large ships that can come right up towards these cobbled streets and across the cobbled street it has large enormous buildings. I don't think we're going to go quite that direction, but I will be looking for images that try to evoke the seaside uh, uh, imagery as well as the, the sounds, the sights, the smells, the feeling of the fog that rolls in off the sea, that sort of thing. And uh, if you guys find any other images that you feel evoke the town for you or some part of it, feel free to send those to me. Uh, and uh, if they are free to use, then I will definitely incorporate them here. But if, if not, then I'll just use them as private inspiration. Um, let's see. What else can we talk about for a couple of minutes while, while Max uh, runs off to the washroom or whatever else he had to do? Uh do your characters have pets? <laughs> I was thinking yeah, about that. I hadn't, uh, I'd forgotten to ask you about it. Please, I hope that was under two minutes. Okay. And I can't, right, I can't hear anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome, welcome back. What? <laughs> I decided everything. 
uh, yeah, it's, it's well done. You're yeah, playing so. a, uh, a, a dragon born, uh, rogue. Um, so, uh, get ready, make one up. Cool. <laughs> yeah. But you're blind and nothing. So it's, we have it's... got the entire idea. Cool. Now the only really a semi-serious question I ask is, does your character have a pet? Uh, now, I will be fair, uh, pets are not invulnerable, mm -hmm. but as long as they're not within the direct line of fire, they aren't necessarily going to die. If you try to stand behind your cat and use it as a fire shield, the cat will probably not help you. Uh, but if you do want to have other elements like that, uh, then I'm, I'm perfectly willing to try to work with that. With you might have like a garter snake that lives in his clothes, like just in the robes and in the folds and whatnot. Okay. Like my character does not have a pet, but uh, where is that? Hold on, let me let me like minimize the screen real quick. One of the items, like uh, you said, we were allowed one common magic item each. Like one of the ones I was maybe looking at is the hat of vermin. <laughs> it wouldn't really count as a pet. <laughs> you very very much not considering that's... that they just run away from you. <laughs> that's a that's a I have to look that one up. That's a that's a yeah. It, it summons. That's one of three things. Is I think it's like rats, a bat, a rat, or a frog. <laughs> yeah, and it is, it it is neither against you nor for you, uh, it, and runs away as soon as you know it. That, that doesn't. It's really just a really sound... dumb item. <laughs> yeah, where did, so where I had did, like that was one of my main. Good for distractions. Where yeah, did that exactly? Okay, it came up with Xanathar's guide. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where all the common items are. Um. And tries to get away from you as quite as quickly as possible. That's just, that's kind of weird. <laughs> I I I I don't how I can't even imagine how that would be, other than the the you know literally I summon a rat that's in the room. That, I threw a rat at you. <laughs> that's, I mean, you, you'd have to catch the rat even to throw it. It's just sort of like that's. Weird. It spawns in the hat, so if you can just like close the hat really quick, then you got. Oh, okay. Oh. I mean, if that's what you want, then I, I'll work with that. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what uh, I want. I had that list of maybes. There was that one, Dread Helm, Pole of Collapsing, Rope of Mending, Candle of the Deep, and Cleansing Stone were all possibilities. I'm right. still deciding well, which one I want. We'll, we'll get to that. So uh, we are making level three characters, for those of you who are yeah. watching. Uh, the level three characters at this moment are not going to be multi-classed. I wanted to start off fairly simple. Um, I find that multi-classing, for one thing, also kind of gets uh, gets. Uh, it gets complicated, but it also kind of uh, reduces your actual uh, power level quite a bit. And I didn't want anybody to feel like they were at a different power level to start with. Um, for the only other kind of uh, restrictions I guess I have is that the, the clerics would have to follow one of the few gods that have been expressed so far within Omatia. Um, those would include Marius, who officially has no clerics, has no... No uh, temples, doesn't have any followers. That's the official line, and every cleric of Marius will agree to that. Uh, there's a cleric of Marina, who is a, a, a goddess of the sea and land. Um, kind of covers a couple of different domains. I'm doing different different style of domains. Every every uh, cleric following domain is, is unique. Uh, a cleric of Tendu, Tendu the Builder, which is the dwarven uh, god. Anyone can follow Tendu. Uh, but they have a lot more about uh, uh, structural support, a lot more about solidity rather than they would have about uh, some of the other uh, domains. Uh, also about knowledge. Uh, Tandu is about uh, for firm and solid knowledge. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, the uh, a, a follower of Ignis. And Ignis is the Ignis the ever ever burning is the way that he's referred to in this particular era. But the god of the sun, the god of creation, uh, a truly god of power, but expects a lot from uh, the followers. Um, the Ignians you followed before, or run, run into before, um, they are um, they're very disciplined, but they also accept a lot of pain in, in, in uh, return for the power that they're given. Um, literally, they will light themselves up on fire. And for a long time, that really hurts because they're not immune to it. Um, but those are the main ones. Uh, there's also Follow Lily. Uh, Follow Lily doesn't really have temples. Follow Lily is a fey goddess of music and art. Um, often given uh, uh, some credit, given some 
um, respect and given some homage by performers. So most of the time, a performer will at least have a little bit of a tithe that they say goes to follow Lily. Now, how they actually spend that tithe is up to them, uh, but they are carrying forth that uh, that message. And it is said that a lot of the beauty in the world comes from follow Lily. That's one of the ways that she gets attributed. No particular temples that you've seen, however, uh, but that can change. So those are some of the few um, parameters I've given um, for what you guys have come up with. Um, I think that I'm gonna we're gonna go from left to right just on a on a single statement as a starting and opener, kind of on your character, giving kind of the the class, the basic appearance, and the, or the basic one liner uh, of them. So we'll start with Pat, who I know is uh, uh, working on Silas. So tell us a little bit about Silas. Uh, Silas Marsh is a human illusionist wizard entertainer uh, who is. Uh, <laughs> I guess looking for adventure. Okay, and as we said before, one of the one of the background elements is the name Marsh is a very prominent uh, for a fishing family. Family. Okay. Um, Marie, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Annie? Yes, it is Annie. Uh, she is a human rogue, um, subclass mastermind. Because I've always wanted to play that one. Um, she has dark blonde hair that's always worn up, um, usually covered by a hood. Um, she tends to wear like greens and browns, loose fitting clothes. Um, she does wear her armor underneath her clothes. Um, and yeah, and always wears gloves. Okay. Always, always wears gloves. gloves. Cool. Cool. Yes. Nax, uh, I know that you, I haven't seen much of what you've been planning for the character so far, so yours is the most uh, mysterious to me, but you've talked a little bit about what you're yeah. uh, planning, so let's hear. So Medrek, so that's M-E-D-R-E-K, is a half-orc half -orc cleric and a soldier, and he's coming back from the war, that he, what just happened? <laughs> okay, let me, uh, let me type that in, M-E-D-R-E-K, -E -E so Medrek. Uh, is that right uh, that I have there right now? Yeah, I can't see it because my yeah, the picture like, you know those, like bottom oh. little icons. <laughs> Let me move it up to the. Yes, top. that is correct. Okay, and he's just coming back from the war, so he would actually be getting off of one yeah. of those ships, uh, coming back to this area, or just decided to settle here. I haven't figured that part out yet because, like, I was trying to work in the background and I couldn't think of anything because for the war domain i mean if there's a dwarven town nearby and i figured like he could be a follower of tandu or ignis i guess you mentioned because if he, if i go with war domain then i am i'm not sure like which one of the deities it falls under both of those, uh, both of those could could uh, support war the main way to think about the difference between tandu and ignis tandu is uh is uh, order and ignis is chaos at least in terms of okay. terms ignis it is <laughs> Okay, so you'd be one of the people reporting to the Flame Keeper yeah. on occasion as well, because uh, the Flame Keeper was the the local representative of Ignis. Okay, uh, I will work out what the what the uh, the cleric of Ignis okay. gets, and I'll I'll let you know about all of those things. I have half of that worked out, but no one had built the cleric of Ignis before, so. Uh, I'm excited to see what, what that turns out to be. Because I figured, like, uh, I was looking at Cleric of Light, and that seemed more, like, Ignis-like because of all the fire spells. But then I don't get, like, heavy armor mastery in any of that shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and, and the idea is that there are different domains you can follow within okay. each of them. Um, from what you've seen of the different people, like, Flame Seekers are very different. Or, sorry, Flame Keepers are very different from, um, for example, you met a Scholar. Yeah. Uh, a Lightbringer, I think that's what, what her name, and she did not burn. <laughs> In fact, she carried uh, books. Uh, so there's different there's different groups within there. But uh, the war domain will have uh, some very interesting uh, fire stuff, and I will let you know a little bit more about that later on. Okay, so um, the idea is you guys are, are level three. You've seen a bit of action and experience. Have you met each other before? Is that something we're going to start with? How do you guys want to do that? I'd say that I mean, Silas has been in town for a while i think uh like what i was thinking for him is that his family came here 
10 or 20 years ago. Okay, people aren't exactly sure anymore. Uh, so he basically grew up here. Uh, but his family lives a little ways out, out of town in one of those uh, uh, sort of sub villages uh, where there's uh, like there's him, his parents, uh, some uncles and aunts and other like a few other family members just living in a, a little group of huts. Um, so and since he I mean. Since he came back from uh, wizard school, uh, his says he puts on shows around town. Uh, he doesn't actually do fishing, uh, but uh, uh, so he would probably be fairly well known around town. Uh, so if I, either of the others have lived here for any length of time, they have probably uh, met him a number of times. Okay. Uh, I could definitely see where someone might would decide that entertaining uh, is a little bit harder, or a little bit easier on the body and the soul than than uh, fishing. I mean, uh, I, I I remember seeing I don't know if it was a TV show or something. I think it was a documentary showing fishermen's mm -hmm. hands, and they were just covered in calluses and and thick fingers that were they were in constant pain. So I could definitely see wanting to not do that. I just shot you um, a quick message, Mark. Just uh, okay. to try to figure out something. By which medium? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just sent it to you on Google Hangout. Oh, okay. okay. So I have a lot of things open. Yeah. We'll check that very quickly. Um, uh, that is a reasonable, um, reasonable start, yes. Yeah. So uh, I wouldn't have been here actually very long. Uh, I'd be coming off of a ship probably. Yeah, same here. Okay. okay. About how long ago? Have you guys just, uh, the two of you just shown up in town? A few weeks ago, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, how long ago exactly did the war end? That's one of the weird problems is no one really knows. They don't remember what the war was about. They don't even remember where they fought. But they sort of, if you will, it's kind of like uh, waking up on board the ship and the, the only thing you know is that the war is over. And then the ship was docking along <laughs> here along the way and you were freed from service because there was no longer a, a war to be fought. All right. So let's uh, say a so few weeks ago. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, I would be very recently in, in the town. Okay. Very recently, as in a few days? Probably or... days. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about the, the these characters. Um, let's start with, uh, well, let's actually start with Pat again. We'll go through the same, same time thing. Um, what would be one of the first things a person notices about your character? And what would be one of the first things that your character would be likely to talk about? Um... First thing they notice was if he's doing any sort of performance that day, uh, which he probably does a number of performances at the docks. I mean, when ships are coming in, uh, that's a good place to do a quick little performance. Uh, is uh, he has some very fine quality uh, robes, uh, mostly in blues and greens, with like a, a sea or possibly snaky uh, sort of uh, theme to them. Um, and if he's doing a performance, then they would see that uh, um, he's basically doing a, a little show at a like a, a table or almost like a, a puppet theater thing, except that he doesn't need the space for the puppeteers. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically just doing little shows and oh, some pyrotechnics and uh, this and whatnot. Um, No. So it's very likely that Annie and Medrick would have oh, yeah. seen you as they're coming yeah. off the boats. Okay. Uh, he'd be pretty easy to see. Um, and as for what he might talk about, hmm, he'd probably be asking about uh, 
like anyone who talks with them at one of the shows or or uh, if they're at a, a bar or something afterwards um he'd be asking uh, he'd be wanting to know what the other places are like uh, he wouldn't be talking about himself as much um He's very curious then about about all the people coming off and where they're from. And... Uh, yeah, uh, not as curious maybe about them so much as about where they've been, what the rest of the world is like. Um, he probably he probably gives off a bit of a weird vibe uh, in that he's very outgoing during a show, but he's very uh, well. He's a little. Uh, I know, not really standoffish, but uh, self-contained. Um, a little awkward, maybe, but kind of guarded is probably it. He doesn't talk a whole lot about himself, um, uh, but uh, mostly he's interested in the other places people have been. Uh, maybe some about themselves. It's, I mean. The, uh, as, uh, especially if uh, like half orc fire clerics are not uh, common around here, then uh, he'd be wondering about that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, mostly he'd be okay. asking questions rather than answering them. And if he does answer questions, probably like just a bit of an answer or maybe slightly evasive. He has trust issues. Okay. Uh, speaking okay. of. The things Pat was just talking about. Does Medrak even remember where he was, <laughs> or like where the war was? Probably not specifically where he was fighting. Well, that would have been Medrick, a really awkward first conversation. <laughs> Medrick remember where he like lived and grew up uh, before? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Your your basic life would be remembered. It's just that everything over the last year okay. has become very very hard to remember. And this is something that Silas would note uh, in particular is that all the ships, uh, for quite some time, a lot of them have this weird clouded vision of their of their existence. They seem perfectly fine. There's no you know they don't seem to be injured. They don't seem to be forgetting how to do anything, but they just don't remember what happened. Um, and you have that same sort of sense of I remember how I grew up. I remember all the songs I've ever learned, all the all the tricks I've ever made managed to pull off. I know all the illusions. I know the training. I just don't remember what's changed. And but you do have a sense that yeah. something has changed. With you, Medric, um, there would be, you know, some of the people you served with are not there. And you would have been told that they were killed. At least that's the presumption, because they don't have a body. They can't really tell. Um, there would be people who are injured, um, and the injuries are, are are grievous, but they're being attended to. Um, it would have been this strange sort of collective amnesia that is uh, everybody seems to be be uh, suffering. Well, it's kind of like when you um, you're even having like a really awesome or trippy dream, and you wake up and you know you've been dreaming and you just don't remember what it was. And you might get flashes of moments, but right. you don't really know how to put them all together and they don't make any sense. And even and on board the ship, one of the things that would have been noted for you especially is even the logs that have been kept of the ship are missing as if they were never written. It's just an empty space that's there, um, which is frustrating. And the, the ship itself has to do things like uh, immediately do an inventory. Do they have enough food to get by? They have no remembrance of, of what they've used. Uh, how long is the, as long as it been since the sails were, were, uh, were, uh, repaired, all of these things would be missing. Um, and there's inexplicable things like why is the ship damaged in this particular way? I don't know. Did we start repairs on it? It looks like we did. And, uh, so I'm assuming that ship, like for how long would a uh, Medrick have been on it? Did it start sailing like immediately after the war was over? It was already in in transit. Okay. Uh, when the last thing you remember is being on board the ship, and it feels like you'd been there for a while, but you don't remember before that. Okay. And that would have been a few weeks ago that this had happened, and then you arrived in town a couple of weeks ago yourself, released from service. Um, the you know they had checked in with their leadership and their leadership had said there is no war fighting 
uh, and basically said, we're not paying for an army anymore and released one of the soldiers, uh, except for the, except for the corps, uh, like the, the career soldiers or the, the leaders in charge at, at third level, you're not a core soldier. You're, you're, a, a, a regular grunt, uh, but with your connection to Ignis and your ability to help everyone combat, in combat, um, would have been, yeah, would have been, uh, very much, uh, Im- uh, important. So you're not a line soldier, but you're not uh, in leadership Did that yet. Combat medic just fireball the enemy. <laughs> no, I, I don't have fireball. That's not war domain. <laughs> uh, it's, oh, it's not yet. Oh, oh, oh. Remember, you are you are war domain under Ignis, and there's a lot of fire involved. Um, there will be some other changes to spells as well. So, but like um, everybody else on the ship with me was people I knew I had served with, correct? Okay, you knew their names. They were familiar to you. Um, you even knew the names of the people who were not there, uh, the ones that were presumably dead or missing or shipped on another ship. You're not really sure. Um, so that sense of, of familiarity, the sense of camaraderie is still there, but you're just missing that, okay. that amount of time. So turning to Medric, um, what is one of the first things that someone would notice about Medric? And what is one of the first things that Medric would talk about or ask about? He's very tall. I have him as at six foot six. Yeah. It's not on this sheet. Well, 290 pounds. Well, he's a half orc, so he's like pretty big. It's like imagine yeah. Zacchaeus, but like with actual muscle <laughs> and two teeth underneath. <laughs> <laughs> so like like two or three yeah. Zacchaeus is side by side though, because Zacchaeus is very thin because yeah. he got elongated. Zacchaeus, is, who started off at, as at five eight, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so so very mm-hmm. very big, very yeah. muscular, but. Uh, Oddly okay. enough, he's not as muscular as some other half orcs that people might have seen, and he's always been pretty strong. But okay. like by half orc standards, like there's so many people that are stronger than him, so that's why he kind of developed an uh, an ability for healing pretty early on. It also helps that okay. what? he had a few dreams of like fire when he was growing up, and it's like gradually that led him towards the path of Ignis. Okay, but yeah, tall beefy orc big armor and i just pull out my own headphones because that's rolling one on dexterity saving throw this is why i usually don't do headphones <laughs> hold on now they're not working anymore oh anime time headphones why you do this <laughs> uh, sadly anime times can't okay. hear you this year Nobody can hear us this year. It's like the great confusion in real life. <laughs> you know, there is some inspiration yeah. from real, real life in my games. Um, so does he wear symbols of Ignis prominently? Or is it something that he, you know, people can kind of figure it out, but he's not flashy. Enough. He would have an amulet, mainly for as a spellcasting focus. Okay. Depending on okay. whether there's a battle going on or not, it's either in his armor or hidden somewhere or not. How long has he been a follower of Ignis? Is this a relatively new thing, or is it relatively new that he's grown in power? It's relatively new, I'm assuming. Because uh, now that the whole like Great Confusion is introduced, he probably doesn't remember a lot of it. And uh, Let me check my other okay. sheet. I don't have a mouse on this computer, which is a pain in the ass. So i got to use a crappy touchpad. Great. Right. I have him at 23 years old. Okay. And I think, uh, uh, Pat, you said Silas is about 20. Uh, yeah, like 20. Yeah, I think 20 exactly, actually. And I believe okay. I have Anna at like 18. Okay. Is it Anna? Oh, Annie. Annie. Yes. Okay. Let's make sure I get it right. Uh, so what is one of the first topics that Medric would either ask about or talk <clears throat> about? Uh, because of the great confusion, he probably wouldn't open up super easily. Like, he'd be a little bit, not send offish, but just... Uh, how do I put this into words? A little bit shy and kind of ashamed that he can't remember the entire, like, last year and a half or so. <laughs> but, like, so... So, I mean, hmm? as a war... Go ahead. So, start off with topics such as the weather where did you come from like asking questions before revealing anything not that he's against revealing anything it's just you you don't want to like just 
throw something about yourself out there without being asked, you know? Yep. Something Medrick would realize very quickly uh, is that everybody seems to be suffering from this. Uh, it isn't something that's unique to him. It isn't something that, that even if he doesn't divulge that he's experiencing it, everybody else is talking about yeah. it. Uh, and it does seem to be the, the, the topic of everybody's mind. But without any way to move further, the, the topic usually dies pretty quickly, other than, I don't remember this. Neither do I. Not much else we can really say. Uh, but it is something that is very universal and very uh, widely experienced. A lot of the warriors you serve with on board that ship would be actually quite angry about it because they also can't praise their deeds. They can't uh, say their victories because they don't remember yeah. any of them. <laughs> Um, you know, there are, there are weird nicks in their armor they can't explain. There's, you know, weapons. Uh, some of the weapons they have, they don't even remember getting them. But they are nice. And uh, one thing he would let on to fairly early on, usually, I'm assuming he would be known fairly quickly as having an, an affinity for the healing arts. Because having been a soldier and then he's, like, laid off all of a sudden, then he can probably make some money, like, whatever people will give to help people with like with their health to have like some yep. kind of income I mean, there would be some <laughs> there would be some uh reticence because the followers of ignis are feared more than respected um but having that having that uh, uh healing ability is something that is fairly rare um the namazanians don't seem to do much healing uh, the uh, the uh, those of Marina tend to be more of blessings than healers, um, so that there would be an, an economy to be made in in simple healing. For, Not for gouging healing. people, but like you know, giving a small donation so I can eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, yep. I could, Silas would probably uh, uh, maybe approach Medric uh, sometimes just because. He kind of recognizes that feeling of outsiderness, in that the like the the people aren't trusting Medric exactly more that they're fearing him, uh, and that's something that Medric probably would get from Silas is that his family is his family lives outside of town in their own little group of houses and they don't necessarily come into town all that much, so they're considered a little weird and outsiderish even if they've been here for. A decade or two yeah. uh, and uh, there's probably like uh rumors like you would get in a uh, in a small town from like, yeah. the, the strange family that doesn't really hang out in town all that much um even though they're bringing in like plenty of fish and selling them to the town and that sort of thing yes yeah, so like a similar feeling of being the odd way out basically so eventually, yeah. I'm assuming over the last few weeks, the, they would have gotten to know each other better. Yeah, I mean, Silas would be doing a lot of shows on the docks uh, as people are coming in, and you'd see him around town as well. Uh, okay. Um, there would also be a, a number of soldiers that would come into the town, basically let off ships. Um, some of them deciding to stay here. Some of them looking for work on the ships. So there, that'll be another background element. I'll weave in there somehow. Oh, um, actually, I'm wondering, uh, all, right. all these laid off soldiers just piling into the town all of a sudden. That, that would probably create a bit of chaos. <laughs> uh, it might. Some of them will find uh, work as, uh, as uh, the Baron's men uh, or the Baron's soldiers. Others will find an honest job rather than killing people. They can kill fish. Um, and others may turn to other things. We'll see. So, uh, Marie, yeah. with Annie, you've already kind of described some of the way she looks. But is that the most prominent thing someone might notice when they first Not meet the daggers. <laughs> Not the daggers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I feel like she tends to be very reserved. But likes talking to people and kind of like Silas asking about them and what they think of life here and where do they just... keep their wallet <laughs> no, actually not at all um she is a lawful character um so she's has she really doesn't want to harm people uh she she follows 
is the rules. Um, I feel like she would come off as a very caring person, um, but is very reserved um, on talking about herself. Uh, she does also like look like a bit dirty. Um, like she, not unkept, but like working type thing. <laughs> She's a working yeah. girl. We got that. Okay. Um, so what are some of the things that, that Annie might be curious about in people? Um, just general day to day stuff, mainly like how they feel about the Baron and stuff like that. Just trying to better things for people. Okay. Okay. Um, and very similarly, you probably would have run into Silas at the dock. So we have three characters who are all reserved but curious about other people. So I really expect a lot of you guys to be <laughs> to be cross questioning each other, <laughs> as well as any NPC I, I, I introduce. We'll suddenly get three three times the other questions. Um, it's a consequence of the great confusion. <laughs> um, actually, uh, looking over some stuff, uh, something that that uh, Annie might pick up on is uh silas likes making people happy um uh, like if she sees him around the docks uh even if he's not performing he might be cheering up like a local kid with like little illusions walking around and doing funny things um he cares very much about the happiness of other people um, he definitely would notice that and definitely would keep that in mind. I think that would probably be why she would talk to you. Uh, I think something else. Oh, something that actually they might notice is uh, he seems a little obsessed about omens. Uh, as though everything he sees is an omen of something for better or worse. Uh, and in all likelihood, uh, while we are uh, playing, I he will occasionally look around for an omen, and I'm going to flip a coin as to whether he sees something good or something bad. And it has <laughs> it has necessarily, necessarily any actual truth to it. It's just he's always looking around for omens to to uh, advise him, and omens are not always around all that much. Um, reading into stuff like seeing the grim everywhere mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so now i want to name this omens cove run by baron <laughs> um uh but uh yeah like he basically is kind of it's kind of like he's looking for guidance uh for things um so that would that would be something that people would likely pick up on uh, as one of his traits. Um, okay, so we're going to say that the characters have have met, and we're going to have them have gone on their first job together. So they've already got a little bit established history. They've gone to a local job board. They pulled the job off of the uh, off of the board, and they were successful. Now I'm going to turn the tables here. And I'm going to ask you, what was that job? How were you successful? And what surprised you about that job? So you guys get to get kind of free reign within within reason. You did not go out and destroy the <laughs> by using chewing gum. Actually, in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I just on a side note, uh, watching excerpts of the uh, the original Dungeons and Dragons oh. cartoon. In which they are tricking Tiamat into a mm -hmm. hole. They are tricking Tiamat into a cave. Like Tiamat does not come off well in that in that series. I realize, and there's a wonderful version of that that someone has gone and narrated as if it was a game to table. <laughs> and I would recommend people go check check that out. So I think it's up on you YouTube. Uh, it is I, hilarious. I definitely would watch that. Time. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. So, on the, with that as a side note, uh, and Tiamat not having been tricked into a cave or a hole, 
Uh, so what what is the nature of this mission? Who wants to suggest something here? What something basic, something that that first or second level characters, uh, kind of as you first come in, and you all just got third level now, uh, having been together for a little while. What would have been that first mission? Uh, for the job board, can anybody put up a job on there, or is it just the Baron and higher up people that put up jobs? Anybody can ask for help. The Baron does have things that they 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 uh, they, they, pair, they post from time to time. Uh, sometimes they need specialists, or sometimes they need something that isn't calling for soldiers. But anybody could put up a, a, a job. It could have been, I need uh, a a wagon full of of wood from one place to another, or hey, uh, you know, I need to have these kinds of fish that are only sold by this market way up the coast. I can't travel. Can you get them for me? It could have been something simple as that. Or it might have been something more challenging. You must kill ten snow moose. <laughs> and bring me their ears, because that's not gross. Um, or maybe it was a simple job, but yeah, apparently it's not a dangerous road, and we get ambushed by things. I don't know. Maybe it was like I mean, that certainly a like farm had like a pest issue. Okay, I, I'm okay with that. If people want to go with that, <laughs> maybe yeah, that's I mean, how the hat of pests come into play, <laughs> or whatever it's called, vermin hat. <laughs> it, it certainly could be. If you if you want to stick with that item, that's certainly how hat of vermin. Been. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah, it could have been something. The I mean, it could have been something. Like just a predator was eating the farmer's cattle or plants or whatever it was uh, that was growing there and they needed help tracking it down and getting rid of it. Yeah, and then we found out it was not actually a predator. It was just made to look like a predator because they were using like boots of footprints erasing it. And it turns out it was cultists and we just had to just put an end to that, you know. And it was actually Old Man Brown. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing that uh, that rubber mask and... Uh... Well, let's not get too too elaborate or complicated because we're not that high level yet. Uh, I mean, it can always be something that does end up becoming a, a, a recurring element. Um, did you know if the bad guy got away? But if if again, if you want to have the hat of vermin, that could have been what was actually causing the problem. Is he was just summoning vermin into the uh, the farmer's uh, uh, you know barn, and they were running hog hog wild. I guess but, wild. basically like. Um, feud between two different farms and one of them kept causing issues with vermin to, for the other one. Oh, I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Made to look like it was a, a predator problem it was actually a feud. Yeah. Okay, I like that. So you were presumably helping the farmer who was the target of this feud. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Do we want to have it as a farmer? Do we want to have it as fisherman? Do we want to have it as someone in town? Are you married to the no. farmer? I mean, not actually married to the farmer, but to the idea. Or what if farmer. it was uh, Silas's family who put up the ad? If it was a fisherman? Um, I have a feeling they probably would have taken care yeah. of it themselves. I don't think, my, yeah. Like, I mean, my family doesn't tend to, to go to town unless they need to, so... Uh, they're they're kind, they're kind of isolated. I don't think they ask for help. Um, but uh, hmm, like it could have been two two warring pubs, and one warring pub has rats in it suddenly. Yeah. Yeah. That could work. I would kind of do it. Uh, I was just checking to see how long the uh, summon things. Oh, they'll stick around for up to an hour. So yeah, oh, never mind. That doesn't it's... work then. <laughs> well, no, uh, well, that could work. You just drop a rat down, and, it would, uh... and they last for an hour. So yeah, yeah, it uh, be, if, yeah, basically, if... it it wouldn't be like infested with rats, but you could have a rat suddenly get a, and it's suddenly running around and scaring the customers, and you just have to be subtle about it. And add somebody who's starting to spin a bit of rumor in the room, saying, "Man, this the food here really started to go down after they had that rat yeah. problem." Uh, but, um, okay. I kind of like this. Uh, give me the name of the two pubs. Well, first of all, who is the pub or, or inn or whatever it would be restaurant, uh, who you guys helped? 
Mm. Or what's the the character of it? A name can can come out of that as well. I'm assuming it would be the pub that our characters, or at least my character, normally goes to. <laughs> yeah, I was, that uh, I was thinking be. it maybe being like the inn that I'm staying at, and that's how I would have gotten the job. Okay. Yeah, same. We could be staying at the same inn. Okay. Mm. And so I would have been performing there. It would be one of the places Silas performs. I mean, obviously he's there. He's he's basically there for uh, boat traffic, kind of like uh, the uh, the cruises that come into town. Uh, he'd sell T-shirts if they had them available <laughs> this time of year. Uh, but I I would imagine he also knows a lot of the places where people stay and everybody needs entertainment. Okay, so the inn where you're staying, that's who you guys helped. And uh, what's the character or nature of the one that was was pulling this and and is it known that you discovered that it was actually them, or is this what the innkeeper tells you? Is they suspect they were hired by that other uh, other inn? Well, I think we. Uh, I mean, again, if this is going to be where Medrick got the hat, then I think it's something that we have to have resolved, and yeah. sort of resolved by taking the hat away from them. Well, you caught the culprit, but who they were hired by, you may or may not know. Sure. Um. Uh, Tell me about the culprit then. Who do you see as this devious person and what happened to them? Did you guys dispatch them? Were they arrested? Were they just simply beaten up and told to go away? Probably the last one. <laughs> yeah, if it's something like... Or like threatened and, and like, it's like, yeah, we, we know who you are. We know what you're doing. Just stop or face the consequences, basically. And once yeah. they knew that they're shenanigans were up then they just stopped because they didn't want to get their shit kicked in yeah i i don't think any would be okay with killing someone for yeah to not touch someone's restaurant yeah i mean this is kind of a uh, a minor thing yeah if they can be threatened to stop i mean great <laughs> okay and you took the hat which you know while it's not a major you know fancy magic <laughs> item uh, it still would cost more than a day's wages oh, for yeah. certain, uh, which makes it means that they're probably not going to get a replacement anytime soon. Okay. And who is this dastardly uh, uh, person who who was pulling off this this thing? I'm I, I will say I'm kind of imagining a bard because they're storytellers and they're kind of tricksy, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Maybe a relative or any of thoughts on that? A competing inn's owner. I'd say maybe someone down on their okay. luck who was like promised money in exchange for doing this. Like given the hat, go do go do this and uh you you can have like a gold. Okay, so the hat wasn't yeah. even theirs. Okay. If if it's yeah. someone that was hired, you wouldn't want it to be someone that can be brought back to you yeah okay all right did you guys figure out who was the actual person behind it or is it only the innkeeper who believes they know who it was well uh roll for intimidation <laughs> one of the spells i have lets me get into somebody's mind so uh okay it wasn't think, illegal a thousand years ago. Oh, it might it might be illegal now. You, you can do it either way. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, if we're basically grabbing, uh, if, uh, if we found the guy, we're threatening him and whatnot, then I mean, it probably would have. It probably uh, if he's a schmuck of some sort, it probably would have been hard for him to keep the secret of who hired him from us. Um. Like if he's not like someone who's strong willed or, or whatnot, if he was just a, a local person given the hat and told to, to uh, mess this bar up uh, for a few gold, then uh, he's, I mean, whether it's reading minds or intimidation, he probably would have just given up who did it. Okay. Here's the question then. Was the person they gave up a middleman? 
Like, could this be one of the people who is a meddler for money? So that the original clients aren't known, but this person is known to be a meddler. Mm. That would be an idea. I think that these, like, if it's an inn in a pub or, or whatnot, should be the only ones in town because it, I mean, it's not a huge town. So, uh, it maybe, maybe somebody else is trying to establish another one. I, I would imagine there, there's, there's actually a number of small pubs and small inns, um, that only might have two or three rooms in the inn and might only have yeah. a common room capable of holding 15 to 20 people. So with 2000 people, I could see there being a number of small yeah. inns. Uh, not not very many big ones, uh, and there's always room for competition, or rather, there's room for competition to to grow and be angry enough to poison your in with rats. <laughs> a quick question about uh, the intimidation skill, because we mentioned it a few times. Uh, so, if it comes mm -hmm. like as a part of the half orc half orc race by default, and it's also in included in the soldier background, does that mean I get it twice and I get like double the no. proficiency? Or no. No, you you okay. get it once. I pick something else instead of the from... intimidation and soldier. Yeah. Uh, usually, there's an option about which ones you can pick. <laughs> most, uh, uh, most of the backgrounds just say you get these two skills. Yeah. But the the backgrounds are meant to be fiddled with. Yeah, yeah. So if there's something else that feels appropriate to you, I don't mind you chain swapping okay. that out. I look. Um, if you're going to pick up like medicine. That would be appropriate if you're going to pick up. I don't know. Uh, Probably religion, even though my int is like I, super low. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with the training, you have quite a big bonus to begin with compared to a low int. So, okay. So if I if I think about this, and I'm, I've kind of been taking notes here, the first job you were uh, the the inn where Annie and Medrick had been staying uh, was being uh, slighted both in name and in rumor, and with actual rats showing up. You guys uh, caught the culprit red-handed, who you uh, probably, you know, beat up a little bit and then intimidated to uh, to go away. Uh, they had the uh, hat of vermin, which you then claimed as your own, uh, and uh, the person uh, gave up who they were working for, rather who had hired them, but that person uh, is not uh, directly connected to any other inn. They are known to be a meddler. Uh, and they are also known to be fairly powerful in their meddling. Uh, but the innkeeper has a suspicion that it is one of their rivals uh, that actually put them put them up for it, but they don't have proof of that just yet. Is that fair to yep. say as a summary? Sure. Okay. And that brought you guys together. You realized you were a decent team. You realized you had skills that the others could use. And you realize that you were all, while a little bit uh, standoffish, or at least uh, trustworthy in this. Plus, it probably gives you a bit of a break on the uh, price in the inn, at least for a while. Uh, they they can't afford a permanent sort of break unless you're a permanent working there. And there are lots of other opportunities and jobs to pursue. So, we're coming into the last uh, 15 minutes here. So, I kind of want to turn a little bit, unless anybody has something specific they want to bring up right now, which feel free to if you do. I have but, something where uh, I can mention it later. I mean, I don't mind going later than seven. Uh, yeah, same. Whatever you guys want. Uh, I, it's not like I'm going back to work tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still have to make supper, but uh, uh, I don't have anything prepared as far as running a game tonight. I got yep. a lot of work to do on this game. So, uh, and if if we are if we're just spinning wheels, I don't want to continue. But if we're, we're on a roll, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tie it down to specifics. Anyway. What I wanted to turn to a little bit here was notions of theme and mood and and where the game might go. So um, I, I sent out a little bit of a poll to you guys to figure out some of the, the theme suggestions, uh, basically taking a few of the terms and, and rating them. And there were a couple of things that came back pretty consistently uh, in terms of uh, it, it, a mystery was was uh, prominent, and some exploration, a little bit of combat. So, um, the direction I'm thinking about, we'll be playing off of the Great Confusion a little bit, but that is mostly a background element. It's meant to be an excuse as to, you know, for the 
for the the players who have played in the future campaign, and for those of you who've watched at home, know that uh, uh, you know a major event happened, but no one remembered it. Well, this is the period in which no one remembers it. So it's a it's a background element, an element of, of mystery, not necessarily going to be addressed within this particular yeah. mini campaign. Just to let you know, that's not where I'm going with this in particular. Some elements I kind of want to merge in there. There will be some other clues that your characters may not realize, but you players might realize and be able to put together uh, just to fill in some things. But I'm not I'm not worried about going too heavily in that direction. This is going to be mostly focused on these three characters. What I'm hoping to do is have it be, at least in the first few uh, sessions, a, a job. Not dissimilar in some ways to the job you, you just described, uh, but starting to weave a story that there's other elements going on, eventually getting to a point where you're drawn in, hopefully on your own, on, into a story, but you still might be working for someone else. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, I am interested in pursuing uh, a bit of a mystery story, so there will be some things to uncover, um, and I'll leave it up to you guys how you do that. It could be simply uh, as easy as reading minds, but not all minds are easy to read. It might be having to go and investigate. It might be having to put, to put together clues. That's kind of where I'm going with this. There will be combat. Uh, it's D&D. &D. Combat is an, el an element of the game. And there will be, there will be uh, bad guys who are clearly bad, and the dispatching of which will not feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I will promise you that. There will be some others that might be a little bit more uh, ambiguous, a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, you're not quite sure which side they're really on. I'm hoping to play with that a little bit. It is also in d and is there's going to be magic. There's going to be weirdness that happens. In this time of the great confusion, the barriers between worlds have been reduced and, the, and allowed some entry of some very weird and crazy and possibly sinister things. So you will get a little bit of that. I'm hoping to play with a little bit of the themes of horror. Awesome. Is, is that something everyone is com comfortable with? Because I want to make sure you guys are on board. Now, whether I can scare you actually or scare the characters, that's the, you know usually you can scare characters much, uh, much more than you can players. But you can only really scare the characters if the players are willing to let their characters be scared. <laughs> so, I personally am uh, not great with horror, with horror, but I don't mind okay. a little bit of it. Okay, I, 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 you know, there may be some bleeding walls or some really creepy uh, sounds or really creepy visions. There will likely be some reality destruction at, at some point, uh, but I will try to keep it away from uh, some of the other uh, errors that, that, that have come up. Um, I, I regret a little bit uh, that the, the target of the, uh, the current plague uh, happens to be mostly children in the, in the uh, current day, uh, but that is also meant to highlight just how sinister it is and how it is not meant to be uh, taken lightly. Um, I will try not to put children in danger. That's not my intention with the story. It just happened to play yeah. out that way. Um, uh, the other hope is with the investigative nature of it. Um, we have uh, a couple of characters very much uh, targeted towards uh, uh, being able to investigate or being able to infiltrate. So I'm going to play into that a little bit, uh, maybe a lot. Uh, that does mean that for Medric, uh, that might be a little bit of an awkward situation, but that might also be fun to play with uh, as far as, you know, not necessarily being, I mean, there aren't a lot of six foot six half orcs in town. Exactly. He knows uh, how so to get information out of people. Uh, sounds a, <laughs> right. So he can use that to his benefit, but there, I'm looking at, at potentially opportunities for you to maybe go into town oh, or to maybe be able to, uh, to find ways to blend in or investigate in other ways. So I will open up those opportunities as much as I can. And, and I want to let you know that I'm open okay. to those opportunities. Um, but I'm going to try to have both smaller little mysteries as well as a, a larger mystery. And the larger mystery is the, the, the one arc for this particular mini campaign. When that arc is completed, uh, then we'll look at seeing what happens next. I don't know how long we're going to be running. I don't know how many sessions are going to be running. I mean... I mean, we're all in the great confusion right now, so we don't know exactly of, of any of those things. But I will try as much as I can to keep it uh, fairly isolated to a session or two or three for a main element, and then there will be some downtime in between. So the other thing you guys can think about is what would your characters be doing in downtime? And we'll try out some of the downtime rules that I've seen in both Xanathar's Guide. Uh, Ghosts of Salt, Salt Marsh has some interesting downtime ones. Just think if there's something that would occupy your character's time. It might be so simple as, for example, Silas might be out entertaining for a while, 
well, here's a couple of rolls to make, and here's how much mo money you make while you're doing it. Uh, it might be for Medric. It might be you spend more time with the yeah, uh, Flamekeeper and learn more about that so we can look towards a skill be skill uh, increase, that sort of thing. So these are some of the things I've been I've been wanting to try to try out uh, a little bit more eff effectively. It's a little harder to do that when you've had a campaign that's been going for four or five years or whatever the other one is going on. Uh, but these are also me trying to enhance my skills and, and grow in those directions. So with that all said, is there specific things that you would like to touch on in, in terms of theme or mood? Uh, in terms of, of there's something you'd really like to try and I'll see what I can do. Let me check. Oh, uh, one question. That's, it's not really like storyline related, but uh, you said we can get our uh, like starting equipment and then we have 200 GP mm -hmm. to play with. I'm allowed to like sell right. my starting equipment or some of it to buy better armor, right? Okay. Uh, if you wish. Yep. Um, we'll make it probably a persuasion roll to see whether you get full price, uh, exceptional price, or yeah, basically Because the, the cleric comes with a chain mail, but I want split mail, so I'll just like sell off the chain mail and get the split mail, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. The idea is you've got you've got your basic equipment, and then you've got the magic item, and then you've... I would assume you wouldn't God, sell no. off the magic <laughs> item. I meant just selling the chain mail, like, which I'm uh, not going to use if I can get yeah, something better. I mean, be, kind of like it's, the magic item is meant to be, hey, here's a quirky little thing your character has, not, hey, here's some more money. <laughs> uh, but keep in mind that whatever you have for left over for change is the change in your pocket. Um, so if you keep all 200 gold or whatever it is I said you could have, then that's fine. That's money you have on hand. Or if you want to invest in something, or if you want to increase your accommodations or something like that, we can work out that sort of thing. So, um, that said, uh, any other comments about mood or theme or particular ideas you want to explore or a kind of arc for the character you'd like to explore? You don't have to have one. I'm, I'm just opening this up. Um, for you guys to uh, to jump in if you like. I think for me, my main thing is making it feel different than the other one, than the other campaign. Okay. So that's why I went with the vote that I did, because we we did a similar vote when we started the first campaign. So I went the opposite direction mm -hmm. that I went for the for the other one. So okay, including yeah. horror is pretty awesome though. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. You know, again, I want to moderate that. Yeah, I, I, I want to moderate that. I'm interested in horror myself. Uh, I know that, Nax, you, you sound very enthusiastic about it. Marie and Pat, I know, both have different explorations of it. Again, the idea isn't to scare the players. It's meant to present scary situations in which you can present your characters. And, you know, if you feel a little creeped out by it, that's, you know, a bonus, really. Um, given that I am interested in pursuing horror, is there a particular horror you are not interested in? For example, some people will not stand for body horror. Uh, the idea that your body could be reshaped by some horrific instance or, you know, a plague might might distort your features is something that... Not if I have greater restoration. That's just an example. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's something that I'll, I'll think on and, and get back to you. That's okay? Sure. Yeah, yeah I haven't developed my character's yeah, fears yet, is... so I'll... Like, now that I have, like, more information, I'll redo my character, like, for this particular one and send it to you. So if there's anything okay. I can modify, you can let me know. That's a really good point. I would like to know if there's something in particular your character fears uh, and the degree to which they fear them, whether it is that they are afraid of them and uncomfortable with them or they are afraid of them and will leave the room if it happens sort of thing. Uh, again, you don't have to think about that necessarily right at the moment, but um, this is my equivalent of trying to demonstrate the X card. Um, this is a, 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 a newer framing of a, uh, of a good device to make sure everybody's on the same page and feels comfortable. The idea is that in, in a tabletop game, you have an X card on the table, literally a card with an X on it, and if you feel uncomfortable with any moment that's happening at that particular moment, you can simply point or touch to the X card, and that is an indication to the GM, okay, back off what you're doing right now. This is not making me feel comfortable. So it might be, for example, if you had a scene with body horror, you touch the X card, it goes, okay, actually, you realize that it's not the actual flesh, but your perception of the flesh, which is distorting, and you kind of back yeah. it up. Or you, you go, um, uh, okay, that happens, next scene. Yeah, right. yeah. you could also, if it's hard to back it out, which sometimes happens. Uh, but yeah, that's the idea here, is just trying to, to approach that sensitively. Yo, I just, I just prefer uh, talking like with just the group and not live. Stuff, so. Sure. 
that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Um, the other thing I would say then, if there is a particular scene that you would like to see, is there something that you would like to have as a moment? And and don't get too specific because obviously it's going to be framed within there. And I would like it to become a little bit surprised <laughs> that you know this is happening as opposed to ah oh, hey it's 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 Maria's scene that she described in detail five minutes ago. <laughs> uh, but this and what I'm I'm I'm, I'm looking for here is uh, ideas. For example, would you like to have a ballroom scene? Oh God! In which it is about mingling with the people that are there, doing a little bit of dancing, describing the outfits, describing how you're pretending to be a character, or is, is that of interest? Would you like to have a legal scene, in which you are trying to present the the legal arguments and evidence to try to get someone convicted, or someone free for that matter? Uh, you know, these are the kinds of possible scenes that could ha happen, but those are just two examples. Well, in a stage performance where uh, Medrick is the bass guitarist and Annie is the drummer. <laughs> I mean, I can make that happen, or I can I can present the opportunity for that to happen. Um, uh, flame drummer and uh, and uh, mastermind. Uh, we'd actually be better drummer. as roadies than the performers themselves because we great like <laughs> backup people. Uh, for I mean, Gosh. this could be. A, I could certainly present a a uh, a bard act, which needs you guys to make it actually work, and you're doing it all from behind the scenes. That certainly can be possible. If that's what you're interested in, I will see a way to to present the opportunity. You guys can play with the opportunity as you will. Uh, although you know, you're you're half joking. I'm not. I'm only like I'm just picturing a, ball, a ballroom scene, and it's like Medrek with his ten dexterity, like oversized yeah. like stepping on the baroness's toes and <laughs> knocking over the punch bowl yep. Dominating. <laughs> yep or maybe you guys have gone on an epic quest to get something of nice boots that medrick can wear that make his feet go in the right directions <laughs> well in the magic items list there was a set of boots that changed your footprints but that yeah that's not the same and i have the apartment hat now anyway so <laughs> Um, oh, this ball sucks. Let's summon a bat. <laughs> <laughs> so you've suddenly made baseball. Uh -huh. Crickets. <laughs> no, I can't summon crickets. No. <laughs> um. Oh, Pat, what race? What race is your character? Human. Okay. Um. There are some things I wanted to ask. Um, well, actually, one thing I wanted to bring up, I don't know if Mark wanted this directly talked about now or what now, but it was in the stuff you'd asked, was the items that we chose. Uh, you said you wanted a sure. story behind them. We've heard the one for Nax's, which is way more of a story than mine has. <laughs> did you want to hear that now, or did you just want us to be ready in-game to have a story for the thing that we have? I think the way that we've kind of done this, where we've had that first mission narrated, I think it'd be perfectly fine to talk about it now, if your character would have talked about it, basically. You spend a bit of time together. If it's one of those deep, dark secrets, it's yeah. unlikely that they would share. Well, then that would be something yeah. that comes up later. Uh, and related to that, um, I think it, pro it might be a good idea for people to, at least for those who haven't worked out yet, uh, to know sort of what was their contribution to doing this what like, what did the rest of us learn about what their character can do uh from that first mission um i'll go first um something that i mean would have been seen because he would have been using it uh is a uh like a small amulet that's uh kind of with his uh general clothing is kind of greens and blues and uh, it's kind of a, like a scaled talisman uh, that uh, he uses as a focus while he's casting spells. Um, and they would have known, uh, basically they would have seen that he's very much about illusions. Uh, so when he was doing stuff, it was maybe, oh, he put up an, an illusion of a wall. So the guy stopped running away and we caught up to him or something like that. Um uh i think uh yes and he probably uh um he has he has named all of his own all of his spells himself 
so uh, they would have seen quadruplication, which is uh, mirror image. Uh, that's mostly how he deals with combat: is trying to make, trying to keep himself from being hit. Um, and if it was necessary and the uh, the the intimidation wasn't working, he probably would have just stared at the the guy that we had tried to intimidate, and then mentioned a name uh, that maybe the guy's eyes went wide with or something. Um, and yeah, so basically his thing is all about the stuff he does in shows. It's illusions, prestidigitation, uh, that sort of thing. Although he does seem to have a little bit of divination because he will, uh, uh, he will determine the weather for the next day in a very vague fashion. Because <laughs> uh, he, uh, basically he has some uh, druid spells, yeah. uh, thanks to his feet. Uh, so he has druid craft, so he can go, oh, look, it's snow falling on my hand. It's going to be snow tomorrow, um, that sort of thing. He's like one of those uh, one of those uh, weather warriors that you see sometimes, where if this stone is wet, it's raining. If it's covered in white, it's snowing. If it's off to the side, windy. If it's missing, the wind is really strong. Yep. Um, What's this magic item? Or are you getting to that part? Uh, yeah, basically, it's uh, effectively it's a focus, uh, it, and uh, he would have mentioned that um, uh, his parents had given it to him to celebrate uh, his basically his passing his classes uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and uh, that. Uh, it's an old uh, uh, thing, just basically a family heirloom sort of deal. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like, I don't know, maybe like scarab sized, uh, something like that. We'll have a picture of it at some point. I looked for some stuff, but uh, basically it's, it's got kind of uh, waves and sea and that sort of thing. So it's kind of roughly nautical. Uh, seeming um, that would be cool. that so Annie's is actually uh, you would see it on her book bag it's a magical lock that is really hard to pick that's all it is um, okay. she's very protective of her stuff um, during the mission um, she would have probably taken the lead on interrogating the guy but she would it would have been actually more pers persuasion unless mm. intimidation was needed um good cop very much good cop um and she would tend to uh when we were trying to get rid of the rats themselves she would have been very much um, guiding everybody else and telling them how to be better at what they're trying to do, as masterminds do. Mm -hmm. Cool. cool. So we've got we've got the the. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm trying. I don't have the right title, unfortunately, for Silas just yet. But I know we have the sort of good cop and bad cop, if you will, between the. The persuader yeah. and interrogator, <laughs> and intimidator here with uh, Annie and Medrick. So, uh, and, and the Mister, what's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> and that other guy, uh, good cop, bad cop, and the other guy. Uh, we have the series name now. Uh, okay, pretty cool. Uh, and we've already heard a lot about the uh, the hat of uh, a vermin, which is I, <laughs> just the, the weirdest. I love it so much. And I'm I'm really looking it's forward like to what that's good going can to, possibly to, come of this. All. None. The answer is none. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, you guys can 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 do some interesting things. So, uh, okay. So, um, do you feel that you you got the answer you were looking for your question, uh, Pat, about that? I think um, we kind of touched a bit. On yeah, like I know Medric probably isn't quite fully made up yet, since uh, there's going to be the Ignis stuff, but. Uh, so does Metric do a lot of, I imagine Metric does a lot of hand to hand fighting yeah. uh, when he, like, he's probably very physical when he's trying to catch the, the rodents or the guy or whatever. 
does he uh, does he use his spells a lot for that, or is he more hands on? It would be more hands on because I picked well, as far as I know. I mean, judging from War Domain in a yeah. in the book, that's going to be modified too. So, yeah, yeah, it's a very physical domain, yeah. though. Um, the one the one thing that would have been noticeable about even in your early level War Domain stuff because you're follower of Ignis, is there often is flame accompanied with just about yeah. everything you do. Uh, and it can be very uncomfortable because you're not you're not uh, immune to flame. You're not even uh, resistant to flame at, the, at that particular. Yeah, I didn't moment. sign up for this. <laughs> uh, but but the idea is that that the the Ignians they accept that as as the as sort of a payment, knowing that hopefully, should they please Ignis enough, uh, they will gain in power uh, to embrace his flame. Um, but that doesn't happen at third level. So. Uh, but yeah, there would be a a, a a tincture of flame in just about everything you do. E anytime you're using any sort of uh, power of Ignis, there would be a flame, even if it was something as simple as you know an after flame uh, in in a, in a strike or something like that. Uh, but I will work out those details uh, very okay. quickly um, and give them to you. Okay. Okay. Well, we we uh, we have moved beyond our, our original time, but I, I am still open if people have more they would like to discuss. I don't have any particular questions at the moment. I've got a lot of stuff to, to digest and, and work on, but is there anything else anybody would like to mention about the setting, their characters? You want to ask each other char character questions? Um, there will be a certain amount that is expected to come out through play, so there's elements you can definitely keep uh, hidden to yourselves if you like. Uh, actually, one thing I should make is uh, we know where they're staying. Uh, Silas has his own place outside of town in the yeah. collection of huts that is uh, his family clan lives in uh, okay no one likely would have seen it because uh, very few people find any reason to travel there <laughs> oh. it's in that end of town I yeah that was his um class sorry i didn't miss that uh that was his oh, class. Yeah. Do think? yeah he's sorry? an illusion wizard i think illusion wizard that's what i thought Okay. Anything else anyone would like to bring up? Uh, we know kind of a little bit about Silas's family. Uh, now, obviously, Annie and Medrick, you don't come from around this area, so your family isn't exactly part of the story uh, just yet. Uh, maybe we can bring them in later. Is there anything you'd like to mention about the family? You don't have to. I haven't thought that far ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's. I kind of expected that. Again, with both of you literally just getting that off far the behind. Boat, it wasn't really. <laughs> it wasn't really uh, likely to come up anyway, but I wanted to give you that opportunity. Um, okay. Um, if there was, uh, let me see, how would I want to put this? No, I don't know. I, I, I think I've got most of the questions and, and most of what I, most of my questions now are about how, what do I develop for scenarios and what do I look for? So those aren't really questions I can ask you guys other than what I've already have. Uh, so there may be a slight technical change. I think I will continue to ro use roll 20. Um, but I, I think because we have a custom cleric class, that might be difficult. Uh, I may look at using uh, D and D Beyond as the character, um, the character base. I'm not sure. That's not really that important, but I thought I'd mention it. Uh, other than that, is there anything else anyone else would like to bring up? Nope, not really. Not that I can Except think we're, of. We're good to start. Nothing on no. mind right now. Uh, not something that has to be answered right now, but I know at some point. We'll have to know um, in the town who is the actual person that is the sheriff or in charge of keeping the peace, uh, whether it's the one of the baron's people or uh, whatnot. Uh, we will probably need that. Um, okay, I suspect what what it'll be. It will be a lord who who manages the baron's soldiers in town. That's probably okay. what it will be. Uh, and by Lord, it's really nothing more than a knight. So it's not even like he has that much for title. Uh, but that's my, my uh, instinctive answer. Okay. Yeah. Um, are there any other people in town you feel like you need me to make up mm -hmm. right away? Or as in for next week? Uh, I can certainly do so. Tell me about this inn. Does, uh, who's the innkeeper? That was the one I was going to suggest that we need, would yeah. need to know. <laughs> yeah, the innkeeper, uh, the name of the inn. Flamekeeper's name. 
Okay. Um, yep. I'm I'm really bad at names, but I was thinking, I know Anna would be, or I keep saying Anna. Uh, Annie would. Be. She's new. Don't worry. <laughs> you did just say you were bad at names. <laughs> She's new. She, she's also new, you know, we'll, we'll all get used to Annie eventually. Um, I think she would choose an in by how inviting the person was. Like, if the person running the end seemed like a good person. Okay. So a personable innkeeper, I can definitely do that. And I, you know, I can certainly make up that entire person, character, name, personality, all that. But it is this kind of input that I'm, I'm certainly... Uh, would love to have so be looking for something um, that's more of like a more cozy spot versus like a rowdy in okay and medrick would have would have picked it because it's the nearest one because it's convenient <laughs> okay i will make up oh shit room. i'm in a random town what do i do i should find the closest in <laughs> By the way, do I even need? Well, do actually, I even know what this place is if all the ship's logs have been destroyed? <laughs> well, the, the the town would be known because the okay. maps are still fine. Uh, it's just that they don't remember, you know, the the last dockings they've done. They don't remember how much they've been at sea, so all that would have to be reverse engineered. Um, tell me a little bit about the flame keeper. Is there anything you would like to say about the flame keeper, or I will just make? I'm it just going to run to the washroom right quick. Sure. Not quite sure. I, I haven't really thought about it, but okay. just somebody that he looks up to for guidance, I guess. It should be okay. Macho Man Flaming Savage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. you, were, you were doing so good at the very uh -huh. beginning of this, and now okay. clearly we've been going to It could long. be Cleric Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Lord Drumpf, then. It will be uh, or oh, Baron God. Drumpf. He's the best Baron. Um, yeah, he has the best words. Uh, I already have King Awesome that was contributed yeah. by Adam a long time ago, <laughs> so that's kind of my analog. But uh, okay, I mean, someone that he looks up to is 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 a great uh, yeah. great start, uh, and I will I will uh, look upon them and see how I can I can uh, match them. I mean, in character in game, you've met a couple of different flame keepers, yeah. and they're very different. Um, the one you met on the trail in the caravan was a very different uh, flame keeper than the one you met far up north by Farhaven. So um, they are they are a varied number of people, a varied kind of people. Be prepared for some uh, scarification okay. rituals. Well, and in, in, in the half yes, world, well, that's perfect. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, they, I will I will warn you that Ignis is all about fire, and you have already seen that they burn each other you know it's part of the the learning process um they're the ones who don't just touch the stove because it's hot once they touch it over and over and over again until they no longer wow. feel for it science. and calluses for yeah for, more for religion than science <laughs> but sure we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll go with that all right um any other features of the town which you feel are oh uh, yeah, i meant to ask that earlier but i forgot or i didn't want to interrupt um What's the weather like? Like, what are the seasons like? Is there one season that's a lot busier and more prosperous than another? Or... I'm a big fan of having all four seasons. Um, you are the almost the most southernmost part of uh, of Omasha right now, um, which would be approximately, uh, I would say, around um, kind of North Carolina ish. Yeah. For uh, for climate, I so think. there's like winter, but it's not so necessarily a, like brutal, like it was in Vatour. It's not. It's exactly Vatour definitely gets a much heavier winter. Um, this is also seaborne air, so it gets icier more than it gets uh, cold and windy. Yeah. Uh, and there's definitely all four seasons, and yes, there'll be lots of wind that blows in off of uh, off <laughs> of the ocean. So um, it probably uh, is foggy a lot. Uh, I will uh, draw on my memories of St. John <laughs> <laughs> or Boston uh, for a considerable amount of fog that is known to cling around for the whole day in some cases. So that'll be a little bit, that's also going to contribute to the horror nice. atmosphere. Welcome to Silent Hill. Um, yeah, you know, a little bit. Um, but definitely has four okay. distinct seasons. Oh, 
Uh, and I'm assuming there's like less coming and going during the colder season, or does that not affect it at all? It's still a, it's still a clear port. There's no ice that would block a port, um, so you'll still get a fair amount. But it's harder to travel just because it's yeah. so friggin' cold. Um, so there would be less, but it doesn't block okay. uh, transit. Um, one thing I was thinking of is Silas probably does sound a little different than the people of the town. Uh, like he's got a little bit of an accent that the others don't, uh, that he would have from his, his, uh, his family. Uh, I'm thinking he might have a little bit of a Boston accent. <laughs> He's from Boston, uh, uh, yeah, well, awesome. he's Silas. He, he's Silas Marsh. Marsh. Yeah, uh, he's a uh, he's from the uh, the Marsh family. So not a huge one, but it uh, I will try to make it occasionally come up. Uh, since you guys are from different areas, you could do accents too if you feel comfortable with it. Um, Absolutely. I may even do accents. I've kind of held off on it and kind of made the characters. Less accent, but I'm certainly have fun with it. <laughs> I can try. And the issue is with I, accents, it's I, like I, I like the idea of it, but usually, like, it's well, not things get, I just forget to do them eventually. Then it's like, shit, what, yeah. what was I doing? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I for a lot of that, just pick a few words and, and kind of use those as your cornerstones. Yeah. And then kind of in, but, inter. Uh, yeah, I've seen basically, I, I know um, something I'd heard in an interview with the Red versus Blue guys way back when was there's one of the guys playing Sarge who's like a very, he's got like a Texan voice and he's always kind of angry and whatnot. And he said the phrase for him was, damn it, Griff. Uh, and doing that would get <laughs> him into the right headspace and the right accent to keep going. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that sort of thing. Like if you got like, uh, I mean, for uh, for me, it might be just going like, uh, Bahaba, Silas Marsh. Uh, and then, yeah, basically some sort of uh, phrase can help you sort of get into that mindset. Whereas I'll just make everybody else from the Uper, eh? Mm -hmm. Silas um, Mosh. Mosh is a thing we do during concert in the Orklands. Um, something that I just remembered, Mark, uh, I had asked about what are common languages in the area. Right, right. So I haven't done regional languages. I've kind of kept that relatively simple. Um Common would be obviously common. Uh, Dwarvish would be probably the second most prominent in this area, uh, given there is a Dwarven city not too far away. Uh, but a smattering of Elvish, uh, Gnomish. There was a lot of halflings in the area as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a, In town especially, there's a fair number of halflings. Um, whereas the gnomes tend to be more in the Dwarven city. Um, but it's not like you can't have a few. There will even be probably a few centaur here, although they won't be in town as much. So as but they'll be. More I only speak common. <laughs> <laughs> so dwarven, elvish, gnomish, and halfling. halfling. So you don't speak elvish. Helvish? <laughs> so I'll take a look at those and then choose my languages. Then, so grab like four sure. or five. All right. Um, okay. Uh, so I was asking about town features as well. Is there any other town features you guys really picture being in this town? I think at some point there will be a bell tower because the idea of a, of a lonely bell ringing in the midst of the fog sounds really important. There's probably going to be yeah, a no, I was lighthouse. about to suggest that, that uh, one to guide the ships in. We might have a seawall. Um like just something built along the edge of the land that uh, let's see. Um, I can see there being a tide too. I mean, I don't know how that works necessarily mm -hmm. with the Definitely. mechanics of your world, but uh, two moons would affect how tides work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you'd probably end up with super tides and super low tides, um, where both with both moons being aligned on the like same. Like Bay of Fundy style. Yeah, especially yeah. if we've got deep water nearby. I mean, you won't notice it so much with the in the sandy areas, but yeah, if it's got the deep water to draw off of. Um, so yeah, that might be something. Really. I mean, just visually, sometimes the water is like ten feet below the dock. Sometimes it's only five feet. Uh, 
but there might be a mm-hmm. bigger difference. Um, yeah, I would imagine at times you'll actually be like you're sitting on the edge of a, of a fjord. Almost. Yeah, like I'm, I, my mental picture of the place is that it's very rocky. Uh, and I mean, again, kind of fjord-like where, I mean, there's trees and there's uh, like, there's woods and there's grass areas. But I mean, like you're saying, the castle is on a promontory, a, a big stone projection uh, I kind of get that feeling like this is kind of like an East Coast, Maine, New Hampshire, I, I mean, uh, New England kind of rocky coast sort of thing. Uh, but uh, yeah. and and there are there are sand yeah. beaches in some places, which is where the, the, the fishermen bring their, their boats up, that sort of thing. But yes, I, I think that fits very well. Uh, any other features or and these can be features which, you know. I will bring in, uh, you know, there could be, for example, an ancient temple buried in the woods mm-hmm. somewhere, or there could be, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's see, fighting. a fighting pit in which it's, you know, there's regular fights brought in, or, or uh, maybe there's bull riders. I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm looking, I'm throwing out wild suggestions here to kind of spur the imagination, but maybe it's. Bull riding, or maybe it's centaur riding. I don't know. That's probably oh, a bit weird. and just so you know, uh, I did buy a riding horse. So if we end up traveling traveling places, I've got a horse. To... Okay. If not everyone does, then the horse will walk slowly. <laughs> it's carrying my stuff because I am weak. I think Eddie would, like a, would rent like a... a horse, but she wouldn't have brought one on a on the boat. Yeah. Yeah, it's unlikely you would have had a boat, yeah. a boat horse, horse boat. Hmm. Um, horse boat makes me think of houseboat. Are there shacks that float along the edge of the water? Hey, be- yeah, an entire floating yeah, there area. Probably are. I mean, um, I mean, really, that might be where um, where the the Marsh Clan lives. Uh, might be a set of shacks that are like at the edge of the water and partly on the water. Uh, they're made like they're built up on those posts so that the the tide uh, always stays below them, uh, or they float on the surface. Uh, I could see something like I could see them living in that sort of place. Okay. Very dark and misty and watery and uh, horrible That's place good. to live from my point of view, but from uh, I mean, it always smells like sea feet. Yeah, that would. That's, that's friggin' probably... suck. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Acadia. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, is there? So we're back to back to the general questions again. If you guys have ideas, you feel free to send me them during the week, and I'll see what I can do. I'll be working on, of course, a, a general map of the area and and uh, and uh, my list of of NPCs and places and storylines and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I, I think having uh, like is... a couple of shops might be an idea. But yeah. nothing comes to mind right now. My brain yeah. is like, okay. I know we're not allowed That's magic fun. shops, so <laughs> I won't. Touch that. That's true. Well, again, magic is relatively rare, but not unheard of. Um, they people won't run screaming if you use magic, uh, but they might be a little distrustful of magic at first unless they know you. Um, for example, the innkeeper knows you now, and although keeping a side eye on Medric and all the flames that keep popping up when they're using their magic uh, still would kind of understand and trust that you're not intending to burn down the place. Uh, I mean, there's probably a leather workers shop or like, well, I mean, the, the leather worker would probably live out in the tannery area, but there's probably a shop that sells the, uh, sells items from leather workers and weavers and that sort of thing. Um, carpentry shops, stuff for ships. Uh I'm thinking there's probably quite a few um, large buildings right near uh, yeah. the docks, basically. There would be at least one ship. Um, dry dock. A, uh, uh, a dry dock, yeah, um, which is probably carved out of the rock so they can actually float the, the ship in during high tide, allow the low tide to, to uh, leave the ship uh, high and dry. Um, okay. Well, I've got a lot of notes here. I have here. five pages. <laughs> I only have one. I'm such a slacker. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, well, I have to track, you know, three characters in a, in a town. So, um, 
Is there anything else you guys would like to mention? Otherwise, I kind of need to get some food and uh, then start working on this. I can't think of anything that can't just be mentioned on the the Facebook page. Yeah. Just those. Same. Yep. And and as uh, as Maria has already mentioned, there are some things you'd rather speak to me directly in person or, I mean, not, <laughs> not being broadcast. None of us are in person. That's just the way it goes. Uh, but, uh, yeah. that's feel free for that as well. That's, that's certainly open there. I just more, since we're all together, anything else you'd like to mention? I mean, I'm, I'm fine with talking not, like uh, to you three about it, but does not. Yeah. You know, some things yeah. don't need to have an audience. Yeah. That's fair. That's I need to suck. Prove <laughs> <laughs> me, me wrong. Watch your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had somebody new. We have somebody new. Hopefully we still have them now. Uh, in the chat, and uh, welcome to Mariketh, uh, who joined us in the chat today. I think I'm going to bring this to a close. Thank you very much um, for your creative ideas and uh, help helping me to flush out what I'm going to be putting you through. I think this is one way to put it. I look very forward to uh, to creating a whole bunch of of uh, interesting people for you guys to uh, interrogate, intimidate, <laughs> and bedazzle. It sounds like. Uh, maybe not bedazzle. That might be the wrong one. But anyway, uh, with Silas, Annie, and Medrick in the future, I look forward to it. We'll get started. Hopefully next week I should be ready to true, do a proper uh, true uh, episode. We'll see uh, how that goes. Um, but for those of you who have joined us live, thank you very much for joining us. For those of you who uh, would uh, see this later, thank you very much for watching on YouTube uh, or on Twitch. So we're live on Sunday afternoons, usually 4 o'clock uh, Atlantic time until about uh, seven or eight o'clock uh, on twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. Uh, you can also find the videos archived on youtube.com slash ENCAF1. That's NCAF1. That's me. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. You can also join us on Facebook. Sorry, the dog's howling. Or <laughs> by dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can join us on. I, you know, that's that's a good clue. Any, uh, you can join us on Facebook. Uh, Marie, you want to talk a little bit more about that? We have a Facebook page. It is just Legend of the Drowned Isles. Uh, we also have a Facebook group, Watchers of the Drowned Isles. Um, I try to announce like 30 minutes before, like when we, we're starting to do our, our technical checks. Uh, I usually post then like, hey, we're running. Um, I try to do it earlier, but I always remember then. So... Uh, yeah, and I, I try to let people know that I'm interested in running the next campaign. Usually, we can advance, but that doesn't always happen. But uh, it's, we're we're into it and now. For, for Jody, uh, thanks. Like and subscribe. Right, something about Just hitting the bell, the bell on YouTube. On, hit, hit the bell on YouTube. It gives you a notification every time a new episode goes up. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Have a great week, and uh, we will meet this crew, this brand new crew, uh, for 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 reals. Okay next week in the town of which we still have not named but i will come up with something all right have a good day guys